All right, here we go. The Vanillite line. Vanillite, Vanillish, Vanillux. All right. So to fully understand why this is my least favorite Pokemon of all time, and why it legitimately almost made me quit Pokemon, we have to go back to 1635 Japan. One unhinged rant later. And there you go, there is a premium three-stage evolution. You got nice, wow. you got nice scream, wow. and then you get fudge. Fudge this line, I hate them so much. Hey, spooky audio only imported cheese here. You are watching the premium edited version of this tier list. If for some reason you would like to see the full unedited live stream with the chat enabled, you'll find a link to that in the description. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy. You should see a uh, Snivy uh, dancing around. Wish it got Dragon Dance, it doesn't. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Pokemon Generation 5 tier list, The Live. <laughs> this is actually a live stream, although what you're watching right now, I believe, is the edited uh, video that I've made afterwards. The, the super cut. Uh, so you should be able to see me, uh, the stats of the Pokemon we're going to be talking about, uh, and the chat at the bottom. Wow, technology is incredible. Oh, and the, um, the, the tiers itself. <laughs> uh, so, in-game tier list. What does that mean? Uh, basically, it means I'm going to be ranking these Pokemon based on uh, how well they help you get from your house uh, to the Hall of Fame, uh, which in Gen 5 is going to be through the first run of the Pokemon League uh, until your battle against uh, N and uh, Getsis. So uh, maybe I should have given you a spoiler warning, but uh, I guess there will be spoilers for the entirety of Generation 5, which is like a 10 year game. Uh, looking at the chat, wow, so this is live. So no PvP. Uh, yeah, no PvP. Sorry. Uh, I'm not considering PvP at all. What makes a good in-game Pokemon, basically? So first is availability. I care about availability a lot. Uh, so the best example I think I can give of that is uh, starter Pokemon. So your starter Pokemon, these three, you literally start the game with them. So they're available for the entire game. Whereas... Uh, the cover legendaries, Reshiram and Zekrom, I think they're as late as you could possibly be. You literally catch them during the league, <laughs> um, during the Plasma Castle event. They're only available for two battles, so they have, I think, the worst availability you could possibly have <laughs> to still qualify for the list. So even though they're super powerful, uh, they're not going to be in S tier because they're like not in the game. <laughs> So availability is a factor I consider very highly. Uh, then you want to be offensive, because uh, we're not doing a speed run necessarily, but we are going to be doing an efficient run. So what that basically means is, I mean, we're going to be going to like side objectives, we're going to be enjoying the game, you know, maybe stopping to smell the Roserades a little bit, uh, but we're also like not trying to grind, right? We are trying to finish in a reasonable manner, so that means you want Pokemon that can hit first and hit really hard, uh, hopefully taking out the opponent in one hit. Uh, and you just want to Oko Pokemon over and over and over until the game is over. So while like a Pokemon might be able to win eventually by doing like Leech Seed and Toxic, wow, good strategy. Uh, I'd rather just Oko things, <laughs> okay? Uh, come on, we're, we're trying to finish the game in a reasonable amount of time. I want to say because we have a life, but that might not actually be true. <laughs> Let's talk about what the tiers themselves actually mean. S tier. Uh, these Pokemon are the best of the best. If you're not using these, why aren't you? <laughs> I guess you're trying to make the game harder. Uh, A tier Pokemon. These Pokemon are very good. Uh, I'm basically just, they're recommended. Uh, but they don't necessarily stop the game. Pokemon in B tier are fine. <laughs> uh, they're good, but they probably have some flaw, like availability or maybe like some sort of like slow start uh, that makes them not quite as good as A. You might notice there is no SEAC tier, and that's because there really aren't enough Pokemon to populate that. It's basically Basculin. <laughs> and other than that, the water types kind of have 
enough going for them that I think they don't belong in the generic SEA C tier. Uh, then there's the letter C tier. These Pokemon are below average. I don't think they're very good. Uh, you can certainly use them. <laughs> uh, they won't like destroy your run, but I, I can't say I recommend them. Uh, and then there's D tier. D for don't bother. These Pokemon are just bad. <laughs> Uh, and I would not use them unless you're actively trying to make your run harder. And then, we're talking about black and white, but there's the gray area. And these are just for Pokemon that are... I, I can't tier them because they're not in the game. Or at least not in the portion of the game that I'm actually ranking, which is from your house to the first time you become League Champion. What's actually new in Generation 5? There's a fair bit. I think the biggest thing is the Gen 5 XP system. So if you're familiar with Gen 5, I think it's the only one that uses this iteration of the XP system, which basically tries to keep you at the same level as your opponents. So if you're lower level than your opponents, you get a bunch of extra XP. And if you're higher level than your opponents, you basically get an XP penalty. So the idea is that it stops you from over leveling. That kind of works. <laughs> Uh, so in generations one through four, um, the basically the strategy is you use like one or two Pokemon, you massively over level and you just stomp the entire game. And in gen five, that doesn't really work uh, because you get such a penalty for being over leveled. So it encourages you to use a bit more of a varied team. You can still over level, you just can't over level as much. And what this basically means is the it's a lot harder to just one hit KO everything without actually getting stat boosts. And you'll see the effects of that throughout the list. I guess to put the effects of the XP system shortly, it means that boosting moves are actually kind of useful. Uh, and it means that the defensive stats of offensive Pokemon actually count, <laughs> uh, because you might not be one hit KOing everything, and you might actually be getting hit. Doesn't mean defensive Pokemon are good. <laughs> uh, can we add a penalty if it's a trade evolution? I, I think what we should do, because what I've done in the past is I'm basically assuming that you're playing on like a, a ROM, <laughs> basically, that has uh, trade evolutions swapped for uh, like level up evolutions. Uh, I don't think it's really fair to penalize a Pokemon for being a trade evolution. But I'm also not going to assume that you can trade right away to evolve, because I also don't think that's fair. Uh, just buy both games. Yeah, good strategy, good suggestion. We could also rank trade or... We could also rank unevolved or trade evolutions differently. I think that just makes the list kind of cluttered. I I'm just going to kind of assume that you can get them. T two massive things. Uh, so hidden abilities. Uh, hidden abilities, when they were first introduced, were actually called uh, Dream World abilities because they were tied to a mechanic called the Dream World, which is now dead. Good riddance because it was awful. It was so clunky. You had to register like a Pokemon account uh, and then you could eventually send your Pokemon to this like browser thing called the Dream World and like maybe find Pokemon with their hidden ability. It was a huge headache and you can't really do it for in-game. So basically, hidden abilities, we're not counting them, which is really, really unfortunate for a couple Pokemon that really depend on their hidden ability. Looking at you, Snivy. Sorry. <laughs> Massive change in Generation 5. Reusable TMs! Whoa! <laughs> so, a major thing in previous generations, and really a major reason why the SEAC tier existed, was because TMs were one use. So you had to kind of consider, oh, do I want to use this TM to power up this Pokemon and make all of my other Pokemon that could have used that TM weaker? In this game, you don't have to consider that, because TMs are infinite use. Just slap it on everything. Uh, one of the results of that is that it basically makes every Pokemon better. Uh, so to be in D tier, you gotta be real bad. <laughs> uh, because at the very least, uh, you can just pump a random wild Pokemon you catch full of TMs and probably make it usable. So Pokemon in D are probably going to be like really late game underleveled Pokemon that even uh, a, a TM infusion can't save. I know I'm forgetting something. 
I'm looking at the chat. Am I forgetting something? $2 donation from Cronado also buries our dream world exclusive. Thank you for the $2. I don't think that's going to affect the list. <laughs> oh, I did forget something. Okay. I guess it's kind of two things. So there's a completely fresh Pokedex. So if you look at the Pokemon available, da -da -da -da, you should see them all now. You might notice they're all fresh faces. We got a completely new Pokedex, not a single returning Pokemon until you get to post game, in which case they start coming back. So you have entirely fresh Pokemon coupled with massive power creep. <laughs> So you'll sort of see it throughout the list because I will be showing the stats off to the side. Uh, but basically a ton of these Pokemon are like min-maxed. <laughs> uh, they just have kind of ridiculous stats. Uh, and um, I'll, I'll get into particular examples as we talk about them. <laughs> but it, it's kind of obscene uh, how strong some of these Pokemon are. And I think that favors the player a little bit more. Because even though your opponent is also using these min-maxed Pokemon, you, the player... Uh, because you're watching this tier list, I know that you're a, you're a real smart cookie. Uh, so even though your opponent also has access to these stats, you can use them better. So having stronger Pokemon in general, I think favors the player. I think that's everything. And I believe we can finally get into ranking the Pokemon. Does anybody in the chat have anything they would like to say before we start ranking? Darmanitan is S tier. That guy might be a psychic type. Uh, <laughs> this is my favorite Pokedex. Oh, uh, by the way, yeah, this is only uh, black and white, not black and white 2. Black and white 2 is really different, so I think it has to have its own list. Yes, Toxic Leech Seed. Mods, deal with him harshly. <laughs> if Chandelure is not S tier, I will start riding. You're going to be riding, bro. It's not going to be S. All right. Let's get starting together with us. Okay, here we go. So, number one, or I guess number zero in the Pokedex, uh, it is Victini, uh, which is actually part of an event. Uh, if you have the event, then you can get it, I believe, in Castelia City. Uh, you can go to uh, Liberty Island. Uh, very fitting, uh, very United States. <laughs> uh, you can go to Liberty Island and get Victini. Uh, and as a um, mythical Pokemon, I don't know why that's in quotes. Yeah, it's a mythical Pokemon. As a mythical Pokemon, it's got a 600 base stat total, which makes it just kind of obscene for that point in the game. I don't think it should be ranked. Uh, in fact, I don't think any of the event Pokemon are going to be ranked in this. I don't really think it's fair <laughs> uh, to use it uh, in, in a playthrough. Uh, so for that reason, I think it is going to be going in the gray area. But if you could use it, I would probably give it an S, right? It's just really overpowered <laughs> for when you get it. Um, in fact, I think we're just going to go ahead and put all of the uh, gray area Pokemon in the gray area. So those are, I believe, Victini, um, all of the post-game Pokemon. Uh, so that's going to be uh, Curum, Meloetta, and uh, Genesect, and uh, Keldeo. I think all those Pokemon are not actually obtainable. Uh, in the main game without events. Uh, and I'm sure chat can tell me if I'm wrong. Zora and Landorus. Yes, thank you, chat, for telling me that I'm wrong. That's why you guys are here. <laughs> also, Zora and Landorus. Yes. Where's Zora? I'm, I'm blind. I definitely put Zora in this, but the background is black. Zora, where are you? Zora. Okay, Zora and Landorus. Is Landorus post? Yeah, learn it. Landorus is post game. Okay, there we go. That's everyone that's untiered, right? Okay, great. Gray tier equals Onyx tier. These Pokemon are on the same power level as Onyx. That is not true. Please don't slander these untiered Pokemon. <laughs> they are definitely all way better than Onyx. They're just not in the game. Meloetta is S tier in beauty, though. We are not counting aesthetics in this game, which is actually important uh, because Gen 5 has quite a few Pokemon that I really like and quite a few that I really, really hate. <laughs> okay. Uh, so our first Pokemon is untiered. All right, our first Pokemon that we're actually going to be ranking. It's one of the starter choices. It's Snivy. I think you guys all already know. So as a baseline, starters are in S, right? There are some, at least by the criteria I use, and we're going to go ahead and pull up its stats at least. At least by the criteria I use, the starters are almost always the best Pokemon in the game, right? Uh, they have absolutely perfect availability which for me like counts a lot. 
So S is sort of the baseline. To be an A, you gotta be pretty bad, like Charmander bad. And to be in B, you gotta be really bad, like Chikorita bad. I think Snivy is Chikorita bad. <laughs> it's going in B tier. Uh, it, it's really unfortunate. Uh, to be clear, I think that Snivy is better than Chikorita. But Chikorita is also in like the easiest game ever, Johto. It has like a pathetic level curve. And Black and White's actually pretty difficult. <laughs> um, uh, Snivy really wishes it had its hidden ability Contrary. Uh, contrary Leaf Storm is a ton of fun. <laughs> And at least Snivy has the uh, consolation of being good in competitive. Well, I'm good. It's like fun in competitive. You can spam contrary Leaf Storm, and instead of dropping your special attack, Leaf Storm increases your special attack, which is hilarious. Uh, but Snivy in game is just not good. Um, you can see by its stats, it's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Um, it hits you with like a mediocre grass type. It's unique in that it's like a fast defensive Pokemon, uh, which has its uses. It's actually very good at a strategy called subseeding, uh, which comes from using substitute and uh, leech seed. So what happens is you substitute, then you leech seed your opponent, and then you just repeat that over and over until they die. It takes forever, but eventually you'll probably win. And strategies like that are like not <laughs> what works in game. Uh, this Pokemon would be way lower <laughs> Uh, if it wasn't a starter, but it is a starter, so hey, it gets to be in B tier. It does get points for the ability to coil. So what coil does is it's basically bulk up, raises your attack and defense, but it also raises your accuracy, which is kind of useless. But I mean, that makes it better than bulk up. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't really save it because its move pool just sucks. Like you spend a turn to boost your stats with Coil, and then what? You can then hit things with a kind of stronger Grass-type move. Uh, grass as a type is just... It's ass. I made a whole video about that. Go watch it, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Snivy goes in B, and I, I don't see any rioting in the comments except from the dedicated Grass stands, which... I'm just gonna ignore him because that's what I've been doing for a year now. I'm gonna keep doing it, sorry. I think that's about it for Snivy. Oh my goodness, you're entitled to wrong opinions, Cheese. How dare you? Uh, but yeah, Snivy's move pool is just atrocious. Uh, if it had like a better move pool, it maybe might make it up to A, because I mean, it is a starter, but uh, unfortunately, a defensive grass time, you're not getting higher than B, even as a starter, sorry. Tepig and the Tepig line. A. A non-grass type starter, well, you already know where it's going. <laughs> it's going in S, although I'm not too excited about it. So by now, the uh, firefighting meme is kind of in full swing. <laughs> uh, firefighting is a really good typing. Uh, unfortunately, I gotta pull the stats up here. Tepig, uh, or specifically Embor at his final evolution, is pretty darn slow. <laughs> Base speed 65 is unfortunate, uh, but you can use Flame Charge, <laughs> which is a pretty good move. Uh, and although it is a boosting move, so you're kind of wasting your turn, you are still attacking. And with 123 base attack, using that Flame Charge, you're probably knocking out your opponent as you're using it. And once you're faster than your opponent, you're probably destroying them. <laughs> uh, Tepig has 123 23 base attack, which is massive. And its move pool, unlike Snivy, is really good. You get, like, Scald? <laughs> I don't know why you would use that, but you have it. Uh, you can use Scald, and you can use Wild Charge. Wow! Um, not a great move, but I mean, it, it's pretty good. And of course, you've got uh, phys nice physical fire moves. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get, like, close combat, which would be really nice. I think... Correct me if I'm wrong here, I think your best uh, fighting move is going to be Hammer Arm, which unfortunately drops your speed, so you kind of have to um, balance between smacking people with really strong fighting moves and like outspeeding them after Flame Charge boost, so there's that kind of balance you have to think about. But I think overall, uh, you can't really argue for Pig Knight anything lower than S. <laughs> I mean, it's a starter. So automatically that's baseline S, and it's pretty darn good. <laughs> um, I mean, firefighting stab is just vicious. It's no monkey, right? I mean, let, let's make that clear, but it's pretty darn good. 
I, I don't think there will be, there'll be any people complaining about Pig Knight in S, even though it's not very exciting. S for starter tier, <laughs> yeah. I think Embor gets superpower. Oh, okay. But superpower, superpower I think is even worse than hammer arm because dropping your attack really sucks. <laughs> I think I think I've heard the voice of the people enough. Uh, we're not moving Embor, Snivy. <laughs> Next, uh, it is Oshawott, also known by the fans as Water. You guys already know it's a water type starter, so no matter how mediocre it is, it's gonna be in S. <laughs> and uh, make no mistake, it's really mediocre. <laughs> But hey, water, it's a pretty good typing. Uh, I mean, like, look at these stats. It just screams mediocre, but, I mean, it's a water type that you start with. It can't really be any lower than S. <laughs> uh, Samurai is the best Gen 5 water type, but it's average. Yeah, I think that is a pretty perfect description. It's the best water type in Gen 5, but it's pretty average. <laughs> I'm, I'm not considering design in my rankings, uh, but wow. They really messed up. Because <laughs> you start with water, it's got, you know, the, the awkward, like, baby cuteness. Then you go to Duot, and it, it's getting, like, kind of Chad, because you got the shell, right? And it's, like, kind of using the shell as, like, a weapon. It's really cool. And you can see, like, the formula for success. It's right there. You just got to stick the landing. And wow, they didn't. Uh, quadrupedal Samurott, what in the world happened? <laughs> They almost had it. And there's points, I think, like, in the anime where Samurai, like, stands on its hind legs and, like, uses one of the shells on its legs, like, as a blade. And it looks really cool. Why isn't it bipedal? They almost did it. What a shame. But yeah, it's a water type that you start with. Can't really go any lower than S. I mean, you get stab water moves. You get all the defensive benefits of being a water type. I think you get Mega Horn. I'm pretty sure that's not a lie. Uh, honestly, like, Scald on its own is enough to make it, uh best tier. Uh, in the sense of playing Nuzlocke, uh, I, I should, I guess I don't mention, I, I sort of assume you all know, but this is not like a Nuzlocke tier list, so uh, that's why defensive Pokemon in general are going to be ranked a lot lower, because uh, like defensive or like utility Pokemon are really good in Nuzlocke, but I'm not assuming it's a Nuzlocke, so that's why defensive Pokemon in general are going to be at the bottom. We're starting with some of the early game filler. It is Pat Rat. Really uh, creepy. <laughs> I, I do not like how it stares, like, into your soul uh, when it gets to that Watch Hog Evo. Uh, and, like, you can see from the stats, is all yellow. <laughs> oh my god, there's basically nothing exceptional about this, except that 420 base stat total. Uh, it's watching you, and it's watching me put it at the very bottom of B. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that... Uh, it really brings much to the table, but it's available right at the start of the game. And like, it's not a horrible. Actually, that's not true. It is horrible, but at least you get it at the start of the game. 77 base speed, not great. 85 base attack, not great. But hey, if you want early game filler, I guess you can use Pat Rat and Watch Hog. I wouldn't, but you can. D all the way. It's not that bad. I don't even think it's C bad. It's just like really mediocre. Like, to be clear, like, if, if you got this, like, any later than the start of the game, it would be C or D. Does it evolve early? Yeah, I believe it evolves pretty early. I can check right here. I uh, think you should be able to see it here. It evolves at level 20. Yeah, I think that's pretty early. It's not a D, guys. To be in D, you gotta be, like, useless. <laughs> this isn't useless. It's just not exceptional. Uh, does anybody have any words in Watch Hog's defense? I don't think so. If anything, people are, like, trying to get it lower. <laughs> it's C for sure. Wow, people really hate... <laughs> Atrat and Watchhog. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be like bottom of B by the end of this, but it, it starts early. Oh my goodness, people want this thing in C. No way, guys. I think it's it's like low B. It's worse than useless because it costs 300 Poke of dollars to catch. It's not that bad. Yeah, I'm keeping it bottom of B. I'm not like too excited about this. Like, I don't know why I'm fighting so hard for, for Patrat to be in B. Uh, but I, I care about availability a lot, guys. So that's why it's going to be in B. Uh, speaking of putting... Uh, early game filler Pokemon in B. That was a terrible transition because that's not what I'm going to do at all. <laughs> um, Lillipup. Oh, actually, before I do this, I'm going to answer Tailored Muffin. I have a question. Would this game's high evolution curve harm a lot of Pokemon's placement? Yes, uh, it will be doing that. Uh, Gen 5 is notorious for having like really high evolution levels for some reason. I think 
uh, Hydro Grind is actually the highest evolution level in the entire franchise, uh, and that will be factoring in. Uh, so a lot of the Pokemon that are going to be in D are Pokemon that like would be much better, except you'll never get their better forms because their evolution level is too high, unfortunately. Uh, so evolution level will be factoring in. Uh, Lillipup, I'm already seeing people saying it's a solid A. Are you psychic types? Because I think that's where it's going. Lillipup is really good, um, like deceptively good. You would think it would be like an early game filler normal type. And while it fills that role, it's also just good. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and go ahead and put Lillipup in that A tier. I think it is pretty much the definition of like a solid all around Pokemon. It's not like blowing your socks off. So uh, it is winter time. You do want those socks on to keep your feet warm. It's just overall good. Um, like I'm going to show you its stats right now. You might be surprised if you haven't seen them in a while. Stoutland stats. Look at this. That's pretty good. And this is sort of what I, I meant by these stats being min-maxed, because this uh, special attack stat of 45, um, basically the stats from that went to the other stats to make it good. 110 attack, that's pretty darn good, although I think that actually got buffed. Uh, so in Gen 5, you might actually not have 110 attack. Yeah, it actually only had um, 100 in Gen 5. But 100 is still perfectly fine, 80 speed is fine, uh, and defenses for offensive Pokemon actually count you're probably going to be getting hit uh, in Gen 5. Uh, it's got great coverage, right? Because you get Stab Return, which is nice. Uh, you can crunch him with those fangs, 80 base power, and you get Elemental Fangs. Uh, it's just a really solid member that can contribute for the entire game. And you get Intimidate, uh, which again really counts because you're probably going to be getting hit in Generation 5. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be arguing about Lillipup in A. If anything, people are going to be like, put him in S. Uh, which I could agree with, but I think uh, high A uh, is more fitting because it's not like amazing. It's just really solid. Uh, Retaliate is so good. Yeah, Retaliate does a ton of damage, uh, but unfortunately that requires your other Pokemon to feign, which you don't want. <laughs> you should do a tier list that ranks the Pokemon with facial hair. Uh, well, in that case, uh, Little Pup would be probably an S. Um, Pickup should be mentioned. Well, the thing about pickup is that if you have pickup, I believe that's not what becomes intimidate later. And inti intimidate is definitely better than sand rush since you're not going to be getting uh, sandstorm boost for most of the game. Uh, I guess you could go with pickup a little pup uh, just to like fill out slots of your team and like get free items <laughs> um, until you fill out your roster. That is something you could do. And I guess that, that those are additional points in Lillipup's favor, but I don't think it's enough to get it into S. But you're right, it is worth mentioning. Uh, I think you should be going with Vital Spirit, though, if you intend to actually use Lillipup, because Vital Spirit is what becomes Intimidate once it evolves. But yeah, pick up uh, as like a, a utility thing, as like literal filler slots until you get more Pokemon, I think that's fine. You can just catch a bunch of Lillipup with pickup <laughs> and get free stuff. <laughs> Okay, any any other comments for Lillipup? I think high A is uh, where it belongs, and I don't think people are too upset about that. Great, let's moving on. The monkeys. <laughs> uh, these all kind of go together. So the, the monkeys, I'm gonna show, I think they all have the exact same stats. So I'm basically just gonna show the stats for Simisage. Well, so these monkeys are like the definition of filler. <laughs> Uh, and Fire Scizor uh, is correct here because I think every one of them goes in B. <laughs> they're basically given, there's like, their role is to teach you about type advantage, basically. Yeah, they suck so hard but are useful early. I don't think they suck that hard, but they're not very good. <laughs> uh, but basically, purely because of the context you get them in, they get to go in high B, is what I would say. Uh, you basically get the one that complements your starter. So if you start with, say, like, um, Tepig, that means you're weak to uh, water types, right? So they give you the grass one. So it basically pads out your team, or guaranteed. Uh, and th that's not C. Uh, even if the monkeys themselves are pretty mediocre, I think they all go basically right here. Um... And we may as well put them in order of the typing, right? So <laughs> that means crap at the bottom, sorry. 
Uh, but they're in their base forms until you give them the elemental stones, uh, which I think you get fairly early. You get it in, you get at least one in Castelia City. You get to choose one and you can find them in dust clouds throughout caves. So it's kind of annoying to get evolution stones through dust clouds. A Simipore for A gang. I mean, maybe, but I think high B is enough. Uh, because they're definitely outclassed pretty quickly. It's just that you get them at like the perfect time and, and then you can kind of toss them away after they fulfilled their use as, as filler. And yeah, they actually have move pools, <laughs> which is true. Simipur A because Scald. You could argue that. Yeah, you could argue that. Uh, but I kind of just want to keep them grouped together. I, I don't think it's so much better that it's A. Uh, why do I hate grass types, Cheese? Please watch my video, Grass is Ass, um, <laughs> where I explain in depth why I don't like grass types, specifically for in-game runs. They're just bad offensively, which is what really matters for uh, an in-game playthrough. Simisage A because Chad hair. I will agree that it has Chad hair. <laughs> Any other um, things in defense of the monkeys? What is the best Gen 2 starter and why is it Chikorito? Mods! <laughs> Mods! <laughs> Don't allow this <laughs> fake news in the chat. Uh, I guess we can, uh, we can at least talk about the aesthetics. Uh, so something that is really neat about the monkeys is that they're based on, I think, the three like wise monkeys where it's like see no evil, which I believe is Simipore, uh, hear no evil, which is, uh, okay, Cronado, you can see the emotes. He knows what's going on. It's the three wise monkeys. Speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. That's what these three are based on. So there's like a little bit more flavor to them than just being like three elemental monkeys. Uh, but flavor counts for nothing. So they go in B. Oh my God. And they're, they're all used by waiters. Flavor. I'm, I'm so smart, guys. Uh, this is the quality content. Please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> all according to Keikaku. Yes. And they get rebellious when they evolve. So they sort of go against what they're supposed to represent. There we go. Excellent. Perfect. Please tell me you like Vanillux. You're not going to like what I have to say about Vanillux. <laughs> You're not going to like it, I'll tell you that much. Okay, next. Purloin and Lipard. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, its offenses are just, like, not there. Uh, in competitive, it's really annoying. <laughs> because it gets Prankster. Uh, which basically, well, it's its hidden ability in competitive, which lets it like always move first with non-attacking moves. So it's really annoying. Uh, but in game, it basically moves first and like tickles you. <laughs> I mean, 88, 88 offenses aren't that bad, but they're not good enough to Oko. And with 50, 50 defenses, goodbye. <laughs> you are dead if you ever get touched. Uh, so I think because we've got Patrad in B and people like were rioting that Patrad was in B. They think it should be in C. I think Lipart, because it is available so early and evolves, I believe, fairly early. Yeah, level 20. Same as uh, Patrad. I think it at least goes in B. I think it's better than Patrad, uh, but not by much. So we're going to put the Lipart family in very, what will eventually be basically bottom of B, right above Patrad. Are there any rioters in the chat? I think that's fine. Get the pig out of S? Get this guy out of chat. What are you talking about? Patrat shouldn't be in B. Man, people hate Patrat. What? This is a generous tier list so far. Well, it's because we've basically only done early game Pokemon so far. And early game Pokemon have to have their availability considered, which is why they're so high. Um, like, I think that Lipard and um, Patrat are like pretty bad, but like you start with, you basically start with them. You get them really early. Good lord, people hate <laughs> Patrad and Lipard being so high. Important cheese. You have good content, but you are literally every Pokefan stereotype. Fight me. What does that mean? <laughs> Patrad is trash rat. My goodness. All right, how about this, guys? All right, Patrad and Lipard are up for review. We'll see where the other Pokemon in C end up landing. We might move them down later, okay? But for now, we'll put them in very low B, okay? We're not putting Patrat in S. <laughs> this chat is getting heated! <laughs> oh my goodness, like look at all this Patrat C tier, Patrat in S. The people are divided. 
Scald the rat? Oh my goodness. Such discussion about Pat Rat. Oh my go- Oh right, um... <gasps> we have the power to poll! We can poll! We'll just do a poll, there we go. Wait, no, never mind. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Do, do I trust you guys? Alright, we'll pull it up. We'll pull for the people. Should Patrad be in B or C? Uh, and if Patrad goes to C, then Purloin's also going to C, because they're basically in the same tier, I think. 74 votes already- wait, how many people are watching this? Uh, I can't actually check how many people are watching without actually showing, like, the live stream control, so here we go. Um, 173! Oh my goodness, people are here to talk about Gen 5! Uh, this is my most successful live stream ever. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. And I guess for letting your letting your thoughts be known about patch rats. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk about Muna to give you guys some time to debate. And then we'll go ahead and see what the total is. Muna. I think this is a Pokemon that is ba it basically exists to explain the dream world. Like the dream smoke from Muna is what lets you enter the dream world. Uh, I don't know, it's like a, a thinly veiled, uh, we'll say four, 420 stat total illusion. <laughs> um, uh, so Muna and Musharna, it's a Moonstone evolution up into Musharna. It is slow as dirt, it is really slow. I think it's like base 20 or 30 speed, it's crazy slow. It's base 29 speed. <laughs> uh, you should be able to see it now. It is slow, but hey, it hits really darn hard. Uh, so the people saying it's in like D, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, it's never moving first, but if it does move, it's doing a lot of damage. Uh, and it's not that hard to get a Moonstone. I believe you can get it in the Dust Clouds uh, if you get lucky or if you kind of like grind for it. Um, so I think Heinrich Sox, who says that Musharna is mid to high B tier, I agree with that. Uh, that is where I'm going to be placing uh, Musharna or Muna. I think it goes below the monkeys. It's not that good. Uh, I think it, there's definitely better Pokemon you could be using. It's outclassed by, I think, Reuniclus later. Uh, but for what it is, it's not bad at all. You get it early, uh, and you can go ahead and stone it up, and, I mean, you're gonna get hit, <laughs> which is unfortunate, but once you get your turn, you're probably knocking them out, is what I would say, and its availability is really good. Yeah, you literally, they literally give you one. Yeah. Uh, you don't even need a Moonstone, because you can get it from Rustling Grass in the same place you get Muna. Yeah, good point. So it's even better. One thing you might notice uh, as we go, out, go throughout this list is that there are a ton of Pokemon that are super, super slow. Like they are crazy slow. And a lot of them are psychic types. And my um, conspiracy theory, it might not even be a conspiracy theory, it might just be true. Uh, my theory about this is that they were trying to push like Trick Room stats, <laughs> strats. So Trick Room is a, it's a pretty niche move, but it um, reverses the turn order. So slower Pokemon move faster. And in this gen, for whatever, there's just like f four or five like really slow psychic types um, that can like set up Trick Room. And I think there's you're supposed to like stuff all of these really slow Pokemon on a team and then use Trick Room. Um, I don't think that's good. <laughs> don't spend a, a turn on Trick Room. Just use fast Pokemon and win without wasting a turn. <laughs> okay, uh, I think let's see what the poll results are for Hatch Rat. We've got 165 votes. The people, they want to let their thoughts be known about Patch Rat. Uh, okay, I got. I can end the poll. 56% in C, wow. Okay. Well, it was close, but I guess it's going to C. Uh, which means I guess that Lightpart also goes down to C, sorry. There you go, Patch Rat in C and Lightpart just above that. I hope you guys are happy. Was democracy a mistake? What a Tyranitar, um, but I, I'll listen to the people, okay, there you go. Uh, congratulations, Chad, you won. See, if you're watching the edited video, if you want a chance to influence the tier list, you gotta be in the chat. And you too can make the monumental change that is moving a mediocre early game filler Pokemon from B down to C. Wow, what a change. <laughs> Pidove! So Pidove overall, I'm going to show you the stats here. It's basically the Staraptor at home. <laughs> uh, I think it's like strictly worse than Staraptor in basically every way. But hey, Staraptor is really good. <laughs> um, 
Pidove, it's basically like between Pidgey and Staraptor. So Staraptor was amazing. It was S tier for sure. Pidgey kind of sucked. It was C tier. Pidove, I think, is either top of C or like very bottom of B. If it got a better move pool, I'd be more inclined to put it in um, B. But its move pool is like really sus. <laughs> it, it gets like special flying moves for some reason. Uh, like if it got like wing attack earlier, does it get wing attack earlier? I think it gets like air cutter. I think we can check this, right? Um, if we go to gen five level up moves, I think you guys should be able to see here. Yeah, it gets like air cutter. And then air slash, I'm gonna put Shulk in the edit. Um, yeah, it doesn't get wing attack. If it got wing attack, I think I would put it in B, but because it doesn't, I'm, uh, I'm a lot more inclined to put it in C. Uh, it, it's sort of stuck until you can get it return. Yeah, people in, people in the chat confused. <laughs> you would think it would get wing attack. It doesn't. If it did, I think I would put it in B, but because it doesn't, I think I'm gonna put it in C above these uh, losers, uh, Purloin and Patrat. So I think it's definitely better than them. <laughs> when does it get backslash? Unfortunately not. Uh, if there's any modders in the chat, please make a ROM where you can use a backslash on <laughs> the unpheasant line. I'd argue B because of lack of flying alternatives. I would agree with that, but what do you actually use these flying types for, right? Like what is actually the point of having good flying types? I guess like one of the elite four members uses uh, fighting types, but I think you have like psychic type options that are a better way to deal with that. I think that uh, the Pidove line at like, probably what'll be top of C is where it'll go. Uh, and, and there won't be another uh, poll unless people really riot. I don't think people are that upset. Some people are sad Pidove's not in low A. Bro, no, no, no chance. Like with this, what kills it is the move pool, right? If it got better moves, like if it was basically just, if it was Staraptor with worse stats, but the same moves, I would probably put it in A. Uh, but no, it's, it's move pool is just really underwhelming. So I, I think it goes to top of C. Here we go, uh, next, what's next? Blitzel! Really cute. Blitzel I think is pretty good. Um, and specifically, it's, I think, one of your best electric types. Um, it is very fast. <laughs> uh, you can get Flame Charge, which is like a nice little bit of coverage, although the power is a bit lacking. I think it's pretty darn good. I, I think it goes at like a bottom of A. Here we go, Blitzel. You should see him here. Stats are on screen. It's pretty fast. It hits decently hard. Uh, you can use Workup if need be, I believe, to... Wow, pe people are saying B. Oh my goodness. Okay, good. People people aren't arguing that it's bad. I'm seeing a lot of high Bs. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with that. It's, you're basically using Flame Charge and like Wild Charge. A lot of charging. <laughs> um, if it had like Jump Kick, I'd probably put it in A for sure, but it doesn't. Uh, so I think I'm going to end up putting it in B right behind Snivy is where I think it would belong. Yeah, physical electric, unfortunately, there is no like power electric move like you would think that wild charge would be like an electric type flare blitz but it's not it's an electric type takedown which kind of sucks <laughs> um good job blitzel yeah you made it you blitzed your way up to high b tier unless i check the chat and i see riots i don't see any riots i think we can start ranking rog and rolla uh, and here's something i didn't really mention uh, but this is Gen 5, but really they should call this Gen 1.5 uh, because there's there's echoes of Kanto. There's a lot of Pokemon that sort of parallel Kanto Pokemon and Rog and Rolla, I think, is the first one that really does that because it's basically Unovan Geodude. And then we have Wubat, which is Unovan Zubat, except it's worse, spoilers. <laughs> uh, then you have things, uh, what are the other um, parallels? There's a couple ones, like um, Timber. It's basically Unovan uh, Machop. Uh, but uh, despite that, I wouldn't say that this is really pandering to Gen 1. The Gen 1 pandering really gets started in Gen 6. You gotta wait a little bit. Gen 6 is when they really started being like, Hey, you like Gen 1? 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 Right now, I think it's it's still like, hasteful illusions. Let's talk about Rog and Rolla. So I think people were saying Rog and Rolla goes in A. I think those people were right. <laughs> Rog and Rolla is, I think, pretty darn good. Uh, we'll pull up the stats right here, and you'll you'll see. Surprise! It's min-maxed, <laughs> so it's really really slow. Uh, but like you would expect it to have horrible special defense, it doesn't. 80 is not bad at all, and it's got crazy attack. 
uh, and pretty darn good attack. Uh, I don't quite think it's S tier, uh, because as a slow Pokemon, it's going to be getting hit. Uh, but once you get your turn, you're going to be knocking things out. Sturdy got buffed in Gen 5, where it now prevents you from getting knocked out. Uh, it used to just prevent one-hit KO moves, which is worthless. But in Gen 5, it finally got buff, buffed to actually be like a Focus Sash, where if you get knocked out from full HP, uh, you don't actually get knocked out. You remain on one HP. I don't think that's really going to happen because G Gigalith is decently bulky. But it basically lets you go into like hopeless situations <laughs> where you're getting like slammed by a special water move and know that you're at least going to get one hit off. And with 135 base attack, um, your opponent is probably dead. Uh, I think that is definitely worth an A. And I don't want to hear any uh, any complaints in the chat. It's definitely an A. Next, uh, Woobat and Swoobat. So this is Unovan uh, Zubat. And you might remember that Golbat was absolute garbage. <laughs> and it got a lot better in... Uh, Generation 2 when it got its Crobat evolution, and there is no equivalent of that here for uh, Swoobat. So Swoobat, you'll notice, it's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Yeah, people are saying C, I agree, it's a C tier Pokemon for sure. So one thing is uh, Woobat, I'm going to show you Woobat stats, shield your eyes, good lord. <laughs> good lord, they suck. Uh, and you are not getting that... Uh, Swoobat evolution until high friendship. <laughs> so, uh, I think considering how god awful Woobat is and how like unimpressive Swoobat is, we're looking at a C. In fact, I think it's actually worse than Patrat. Simple Calm Mind is busted. Simple is the hidden ability. No hidden abilities in this list. Would even argue D. I don't quite think it's D because at least it's available early, but yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> B tier. No. <laughs> no, not a chance. All right, Woobat and Swoobat, you can swoop on into the bottom of C. This thing's pretty darn bad. It's just, it's just kind of useless. Any, any riots for this? Doesn't look like it. Still better special attack than Superior. That's true. Ripperoni Superior. Two dollar donation from Sean Duffs. Excadrill is a Giga Chat. Well, that is a good transition into talking about. Uh, Excadrill, because if you've seen the thumbnail for this video, which, I mean, if you're watching it, you have, uh, yeah, Excadrill is arguably the best Pokemon in the game. <laughs> Excadrill is a Giga Chad. It is pretty much the embodiment of everything that makes a Gen 5 Pokemon in particular really good. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the stats, and uh, don't shield your eyes because you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna feast your eyes on this. Uh, these stats are basically perfect. Uh, oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Uh, so you get Excadrill, or specifically Drillbur, pretty early, a dust cloud in Wellspring Cave. Uh, and Drillbur itself is okay. Um, it's not amazing, but it is pretty darn good. You're going to be hitting things with some, uh, I believe, some stab digs fairly early. Uh, it evolves into Excadrill not too late, uh, level 31. And once you get to Excadrill, it's over. <laughs> it is over. Uh, because you've got the ground typing to make sure that things die, and the steel typing to make sure you don't die. That's basically all you need. Um, 88 speed, it's not lightning fast, but it is fast. E it's basically the cusp of fast enough, uh, especially if you overlevel your opponent, which you probably will slightly. Uh, with 135 base attack, honestly, you don't really need to boost your attack. Uh, to knock things out, like stab Earthquake with 135 base attack, goodbye. <laughs> uh, goodbye. This thing, I'm honestly going to put it ahead of uh, Tepig. I think it's in contention for the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, there's a reason that in my Discord server, uh, most, almost every type has like a Michael Phelps edit <laughs> um, representing the best Pokemon or like one of the best Pokemon of their type. And for ground, it's uh, Excadrill. I think it's incredible. <laughs> and it, we're not counting it in the in the tier list, but in competitive, Excadrill was so good that it was banned. <laughs> Excadrill is the embodiment of turn off your brain. Yeah, it's it's pretty. You can't really go wrong with Excadrill. <laughs> really, really good. And that's not even counting um, its abilities, right? It basically has no abilities in game because uh, Sand Rush you can't really use. Uh, without setting up Sandstorm and like hurting the rest of your team, you don't even need it. You don't even need it. It has no ability and it's still one of the best Pokemon in the game. 
Great Pokemon. All right. Audino. This is the first Pokemon on the list that's like, I would consider like a defensive Pokemon. Uh, the main niche of Audino is uh, not on your team. It's getting killed <laughs> to power up the rest of your team because it gives you a lot of XP. So look at these stats here. You can see offensively, it's a sad story, right? 60-60 offenses and 50 speed. Uh, is it D tier? I don't think it's that bad, um, but it's definitely like low C. Uh, a good point is that you can, because it is like a normal type that gets a bunch of um, TMs, you can like stuff it with a bunch of TMs to like give the illusion of it having coverage. But with 60-60 offenses, like... What are you doing? <laughs> uh, discount Chansey, yeah. Audino is a sad, basically a sad Chansey ripoff. I think it's actually better than Chansey because you at least get it earlier. <laughs> you do get it really early. I wouldn't say it's unusable garbage. I don't think I'm gonna put it in D. It's really hard for a Pokemon that joins this early to be in D, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> It's pretty bad. Uh, XP tier, yeah. I'm thinking like bottom of C is where uh, I'm going to put it. Audino B tier? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. And Audino giving you a bunch of XP, like that's not like a factor. <laughs> like being useful when you knock it out, it's like, that doesn't give it points on this list, guys. Uh, but it is worth noting because I think that's why Audino is like in the game. Uh, it's meant to be like an XP battery, uh, but like on your actual team, no thanks. Uh, I think bottom of C is where it belongs. Will there be riots in the chat? I don't think so. Regenerator is pretty good though. I mean, I guess, but in general, you're not really going to be switching out, right? Like defensive utility does not factor into this at all. Chat is bad at Pokemon. A moment of silence to all the Audino that were swiftly murdered at the hands of trainers who wanted to get through <laughs> Gen 5 efficiently. Yeah. Uh, oh, and here is um, a pretty obscure fact you guys might not know, but in Generation 6, they introduced a mechanic called Mega Evolution, and this Pokemon, Audino, has a Mega Evolution. It's true. Only true Pokemon fans will know, but here you go. Mega Audino actually exists. Not many people know that. Timber! Uh, the Unovan Machop line? So Timber. If you know anything about Gen 5, it's the first fighting type we've seen. Uh, in Gen 5, uh, Game Freak, they, I don't know, they all started going to the gym or something because they decided to add a ton of ridiculously good fighting types. They're all like insane. Not all of them, but a lot of them are insane. And it starts with Timber. <laughs> this thing's crazy. Uh, so if you look at these stats, it's basically the fighting type version of rock and, the Rock and Roller line. So like, look, look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. It's pretty slow, but 140 base attack, good lord. I don't think it's S tier, I think it, it, it basically goes where Rock and Roller does. I think it's a little bit better than Rock and Roller, but it's basically, you move second probably. Uh, you don't die, because you've got pretty good defense, you're pretty beefy, and then you just annihilate whatever you hit. <laughs> 140 attack, goodbye. Uh, and both of its abilities are pretty darn good. Uh, you can have Guts, uh, which will just take your attack to the moon if you ever get status, and you can get Sheer Force, and how Sheer Force works, it's a really good ability. It basically removes secondary effects, um, so that would be like Flinch Chance on Rock Slide, for example, and powers up the move. And in general, the power is worth losing the secondary effects. People want it in S. Do you guys think it's S? I think it's top of A. I would put it in top of A. I think it's too slow for S. So I think to be in S, you, you, you've you really got to go first. Consider this, like, when you move second, which you always will as Conkildur, basically, assuming you one-shot everything, which you also will be doing as Conkildur, moving second means that the game takes almost twice as long. Because, like, if you move first and one hit KO, like, say your opponent has three Pokemon. If you move first and one hit KO, the battle is three turns. If you move second and one hit KO, the battle is six turns, right? Because your opponent has to attack you. I don't think it should go in S. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get Mach Punch by level up. And a 40 base power move is not going to be Okoing everything. It also doesn't get Drain Punch yet, which is unfortunate. As a, like, level up or TM move, because there isn't a TM for it in Gen 5. Guts Mach Punch. Guys, that's not possible. It's not possible in this tier list, which is a Gen 5 in-game. Yeah, it does not have Drain Punch yet. Uh, Drain Punch is a breeding move, I believe, in Gen 5. So you're not going to be getting that either. I think top of A is fine. I don't think people will, um, if, uh, to be clear, if this was faster, it would be S, for sure. Uh, but unfortunately, you're going to be going second, almost guaranteed. But once you get your move, you're going to be, uh, dealing massive damage. Am I the only one who breeds for moves in playthroughs? Uh, you might be. <laughs> Any last comments about Timber? This is your chance. Quick claw meme strats, okay. Outclassed by choice specs, Machamp. 
<laughs> I mean, if you're talking about meme sets, yeah, I guess it is outclassed by Choice Specs Machamp. You are right. <laughs> Tim Pole, uh, Unovan Polywag. It's definitely better than uh, Polywag to Polywrath. Uh, once we get into Drizzle stuff, I don't know if you can say it's better, but uh, in terms of in-game, this thing is not bad. Uh, this is a balanced Pokemon, which is kind of unfortunate, but if you look over here, chat, please tell me, what type is this Pokemon? I'm waiting for chat to tell me, what type is this Pokemon? Water ground. Yes, it's water ground. So, I mean, it's the Swampert at home, but hey, Swampert is absolutely insane. So, nothing on this Pokemon is, like, that, like, exceptional, but it's, it's a water ground type. Insane. <laughs> You're basically invincible. <laughs> you get stab water, which is amazing. You get stab ground, which is amazing. I don't think you can say this thing goes any lower than A. I, I think I'm actually going to put it above Rog and Rolla and below Lillipup is what I'm thinking. So, I'll go ahead and do that now. Boop. Oh, since Earthquake TM is post-game, best you get is Dig bulldoze yeah that, that's a little unfortunate isn't this super late available plus evolution this thing no you get it pretty early and uh third level 36 I've, oh you can't see that uh level 36 to its final evolution i think it should be higher than lillipup it's so good i don't know about that uh i think lillipup is a little bit better uh because you do get lillipup earlier and uh lillipup also i think it's like stab return is pretty darn good and um like another Chatter pointing out, you don't actually get Earthquake on this thing. <laughs> Quagsire is the Seismitoad at home. Yeah, like in terms of like water ground Pokemon, like the premium is Swampert. Here's the ranking. Here we go. Here's, here's how we do it. So Swampert is obviously the top. Then the Swampert at home is um, Seismitoad. Then the Seismitoad at home is Gastrodon. Then the Gastrodon at home is Whiskash. And then the Whiskash at home is Quagsire. It's a lot of homes. I don't even own a single home. I'm really jealous of all these all these water ground types. Real estate market dominated by water ground types. Who knew? Any final comments about Seismitoad? What about Pokemon Home? <laughs> Throw and Sock. So this is where I really have to mention that uh, aesthetics don't matter. Uh, because I think uh, Sock and Throw are some of the worst designs in Pokemon history. I, I think they're just atrocious. Like, they're basically Muppets. Yeah, Bird and Ernie with, like, skin conditions and, like, martial arts uniforms. I, I think it is shocking to me that we are five generations in with all the resources of the Pokemon company and they come up with these designs. Like, I, I don't think there's any term for it other than creatively bankrupt. I just... <laughs> I think these designs are horrible, and their names as well are a complete joke. Like, let's just take real words and just, like, misspell them. This is a new Bogo, this is my name. Amazing. Wow. Incredible. How much, how much brain power did it take for that? I can't believe it. Oh my god. And, like, the real crime is they named one Sock. So what's the other one gonna be? It's gotta be Bop, right? Sock and Boppers? Sock a bopper, sock a bopper. You can sock all day and bop all night. They named it Throw. Horrible. But aesthetics don't factor into these tier lists, right? I don't care about aesthetics at all, and there's no denying that both of these are really, really good. Um, sock in particular, I think, is actually an S tier Pokemon. Um, and before you type your complaints in the chat, look at this. Look at this. You're going to tell me this isn't an S tier Pokemon? It's S. Like, you get this thing right before the normal gym. 85 base speed is, like, good enough, and 125 base attack is incredible. It's base... Yeah. Easily... I was just about to say it, but easily, easily said it in the chat. It's basically Heracross. Yeah. Uh, and Heracross is really good. It's just a Pokemon that, for the time you get it in the game, is has insane stats, right? Because remember, the stats I've shown you so far have been for Fully Evolved. Sock is Fully Evolved. You get it, and it's this strong. Like, right away. There's no arguing that this thing is lower than S, but I hate it. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Sock. Uh, and Throw is just the, like, more defensive version of Socks. You can see it here. It's still, like, decently offensive, but it's still, like, 100 base attack, decent defenses, and again, you get it, like, fully evolved. Uh, so I think it's probably gonna be, I'm thinking, like, bottom of A. Yeah, throw is definitely worse than timber. 
Um, it has a much lower ceiling than uh, Conkledor. Conkledor is way better. Uh, but, I mean, it starts as Thro, who is stronger than Timber. So I think that Thro gets to be at the bottom of A, unfortunately. No biases in these lists. I don't like it, but there you go. Uh, also, thank you, Sean Does Stuffs, for the generous $2 donation, which I will now read. Sock on these. These what? I won't say it. Suwaddle. And I think that these uh, sort of early game bugs are one of the clearest examples of the Gen 5 power creep. Because look at this base stat total is, base stat total is 500. That's really high. Uh, like if you compare like Suwaddle to Butterfree and uh, Scolipede to Beedrill, it's like a joke. <laughs> and you could argue that they're not exactly the same role because the Gen 1 bugs evolve really early. And these Pokemon actually evolve like decently late. I think it's um, like 20s for Swaddle. Yeah, 20 to Swadloon, and then Friendship to Leveny. Uh, but I mean, these stats are not bad. Unfortunately, chat, what type is this Pokemon? It's Grass Bug. <laughs> Grass Bug is pretty unfortunate, but it's really not that bad. It's really not that bad. And bug types in general get a big boost in this generation because, chat, tell me what types the Elite Four are. The Elite Four are Psychic, Ghost, Dark, and Fighting. So against half the Elite Four, uh, bug kind of wins. Uh, I think people are saying in the chat now, I think bottom B is a good place for Sawaddle. It is dark in my room. <laughs> <laughs> it is dark, but uh, Swaddle in bottom of B, I think, is where it belongs. It's like, okay, when you get it, um, you can Leaf Blade stuff, that's okay. And these stats in total, they're not incredible, but they're, like, good enough. People are saying high C. Hold it! Leave and he can use Grass Whistle and Home Claws. <laughs> no, that's not a, not a real combo, guys. Uh, B for best. I'm thinking bottom of B. Is where I'm gonna put it. We're not using grass whistle, guys. <laughs> Let's just grass whistle home. No, it's a waddle. Good job. Bottom of bottom of B is, I think, where it goes. I think you could argue that it could go in top of C, but I think its stats are like good enough. Its availability is good enough, and its matchups against the Elite Four are good enough to like just barely squeak into the bottom of B. Uh, and Chad has just lost its mind. It's talking about string shot agility. It's talking about home claws, grass whistle. No. <laughs> so, okay. No. Venipede line into. I was gonna say it's Japanese name. It's like Pandora. Uh, what's its English name? Scolipede. Uh, Scolipede. It's better than Swaddle, I would say, but it's not amazing. Uh, I, in fact, I would say it's like just barely better than Swaddle. I'll pull up the stats right now. Uh, don't be deceived because what you're gonna see right here are actually the the buffed stats. Wait, was I deceived? Guys, I'm lying to you. Yes. No, no, I, I was not deceived. Um, guys, don't be deceived, because what you're seeing right now are the buffed stats. Uh, it used to actually have 90 base attack, so it's not actually 100 base. 90 is still, like, fine. And you're not getting speed boost, because that's a hidden ability. So considering that you don't get speed boost, uh, and you have slightly weaker attack, uh, I don't quite think this makes it into the higher echelons of B, but I think it's basically just a better swaddle. It's basically a decently strong bug move, uh, on a speed stick, 112 speed, that's amazing. I, I guess you could do baton pass strats with this, but uh, I wouldn't bother with that for in-game. You can just hit things and knock them out with the Excadrill. <laughs> People are saying C. Better defensive typing, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I think bug poison, it's not great, but it's probably better than uh, bug grass overall. Like literally the two messages next to each other, below the monkeys better than the monkeys at very least. I think I'm just gonna put it right above Swaddle is I think where it belongs, uh, cause it's a little, faster and a little more offensively minded than Sawaddle, so I think, I think it goes a little bit higher. And it gets Megahorn, which is nice. Congratulations, Scolipede. There you go, bottom of B. Cottony line. Cottony and Whimsicott. Uh, I mean, look at these stats. It's a fast defensive grass type, so it moves first, and then what? Like, <laughs> uh, keep in mind, it doesn't have a fairy typing yet, uh, which is a huge buff. Uh, it's not D, no, it's not D, but it's pretty darn bad. Uh, I think it's gonna be in C. Uh, it's it's basically like the jump pluff of Gen 5. 
uh, where the strategy to win is to like annoy your opponent to death. Uh, but keep in mind, right? Your opponent is a computer. So the only person you're actually annoying is you. Uh, it does get prankster. It's just a prank, bro. So it almost always goes first with its non-damaging moves and uh, eventually, like when you die of old age, um, you'll win the battle. It's a fearic victory. What a big word. Yeah, in, in terms of in-game, this is not what you want. Uh, I don't quite think it's a D, but it's a C. In fact, I actually think it's worse than Audino. So I'm going to put it below Audino. Yeah, and Prankster is not relevant in single player at all. Uh, because 116 speed, you're probably going first anyway. So the ability to guaranteed, almost guaranteed, use uh, non-attacking moves first is just worthless. Doesn't mean anything. Sorry, Cottony. Lilligant. Are you ready? You guys think I don't like grass types? You're right. We are not biased on this channel, okay? We evaluate Pokemon based on their individual merits. And I think that Lilligant is an A-tier Pokemon. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it here, is the chat rioting. This thing is really good. This thing is really, like, seriously, like, look, first of all, look at these stats. This is basically what you wanna see, right? Decent enough speed and a pretty darn good special attack. And look at this. Are, are you ready? We're, we're gonna go to the moves, all right? Gen five. Can you see this? Gen five. Look at this. Quiver Dance. You guys know what Quiver Dance does? Plus speed, plus special attack, and for free, plus special defense, right? I mean, grass moves aren't that great, but basically you spend one turn to Quiver Dance and then you Oko everything. I think that's an A. It's really not that bad. Uh, and as people have mentioned, um, you can go ahead and use Pedal Dance without any fear of the drawback because you have own tempo, so you don't even get confused. Put it in S? No. <laughs> it's definitely not S, but uh, considering that you can spend one turn to Quiver Dance and uh, basically sweep everything, I think that's an A. And it's available decently early. What about coverage? The coverage is not great, but considering that you have decent special attack and you could actually boost that attack very reliably, uh, I think it's fine to consider it um, in a, despite the fact that really you're only gonna be using grass moves. Any any people rioting about Lilligant in A? They want it higher. Oh wait, sorry, I missed a $5 donation from, oh sorry, five quid. I missed a five quid donation from Richard Davis, S tier Lilligant, no, sorry. But thank you for the five, five pounds. Uh, <laughs> enjoy seeing a high tier grass type while you can. It's Basculin. I mean, there's no C tier in this game, SEA C tier, but if there was, is there a more SEA C tier Pokemon than Basculin? Like this thing is, I don't know. There's no other term for it. It's creatively bankrupt. Like it's just a fish. And look, you can click on this button for additional artwork. What's it gonna be? Wow, incredible. Such variety, the eye is slightly different and the stripe is a different color. Incredible, who cares? Well, it's a water type, that's pretty good. It's got okay attack. Put it at the like, bottom of B, sure. Any, any objections? Are there any rabid basculine fans that demand that I place it higher? C tier, yeah. If there was an SEA C tier in this game, it would go there for sure. Bottom of B with those stats, I mean, it's fast enough, and uh, this ability here, Adaptability, is really good. So what Adaptability does is it doubles your stab bonus. So instead of 1.5, you get double. And Water is a good type, so Adaptability Water moves means that its attack is really like, you can think of it as higher than 92. Uh, I think like bottom of B is fine. Uh, you'd argue it's above the bugs. Yeah, that, that is an argument you could make. Uh, I don't think it's wrong. But I also think that uh, the bugs bring something that Basculin really doesn't. Um, maybe I'm just, like, dumb? <laughs> uh, hopefully somebody in the chat can help me. Uh, but can, can somebody explain to me why this ability is called Adaptability? So you would think that Adaptability would do the opposite of what it says, right? You'd think that it would give you, like, a stab bonus or some sort of bonus for using moves that aren't your type, right? because you're adapting to other things. But what it does is it makes you better at not adapting. You're better at using what you're comfortable with. 
Like, am I just thinking of this wrong? Can somebody please tell me why this ability is called adaptability? Bad translation. I considered that already. I looked at it, um, because it's Japanese, is a tiki, uh, I think it's tiki ose, which is like literally adaptability. It's, it means the same. It adapts to what it has, so that's why it gets 2x, I guess? It makes no sense, same in Spanish. Adapting to the fact that you're using a bass, okay. Adaptability means to adapt to your niche more intensely. I think it's the opposite of that, right? Oh, it's tiki ryoku? It's not tiki ose, sorry. Uh, fake news, whoops. <laughs> I adapted to breathing, I breathe stronger now. It's more like you're adept at something. Uh, yeah, I guess it if it was called like adept, I would I would um agree that that's what the ability should do. I don't know. I, I just think adaptability is like a sus name. Cause like think about when you would use adaptability in like an English sentence, right? Like say you're like, oh yeah, my coworker uh, James. I'd say his greatest strength is his adaptability. That's why we never ask him to go out of his comfort zone. Like what? Uh, that's enough about harping on adaptability, but I just don't think it makes any sense. Oh, wow. Look who's next. It's Sandile. You guys saw the thumbnail, right? I think you guys know where Sandile is going. Sandile. What's the first letter of Sandile? It's S. Yeah. Uh, the Sandile line is going in S for sure. Look at these stats. These are beautiful. Beautiful. 92 base speed. I mean, it's a little slow, but it's it's fast enough. 117 attack. That is fantastic, and it is only going up because, look at this, Moxie. So if you don't know what Moxie does is when you knock out the opponent, uh, you get plus one attack. Uh, and in a game like Gen 5, where one of the big issues is not being overleveled enough to knock out everything, after you get that Moxie boost, everything is dying <laughs> in one hit. Uh, and it helps that generally trainers lead with, you know, crap Pokemon, uh, and then they have their stronger Pokemon in reserve, and their stronger Pokemon are going to be facing like a plus two or plus three attack uh, Crocodile, and they're just going to die. <laughs> Uh, this thing is incredible. Uh, it is definitely going in S. The question is whether or not it's better than Drillbur and Excadrill. And I think it's a no on that, but it's close. I think you could argue it both ways. But I personally think it's a little bit worse uh, because when you get Drillbur earlier, and Drillbur also hits its peak earlier. Uh, because uh, I think you can see it here, the uh, Crocodile evolution is a little bit later, it's level 40. Sandile kind of sucks. It's, it's not bad, but it's like kind of like suspicious. Uh, Crocorock is fine, but you really have to get two Crocodile to get things going, uh, which takes a little bit of time, whereas uh, Excadrill is already destroying the game at like level 32. Uh, Intimidate is also like a fine option, but when your other option is Moxie, no, <laughs> you need Moxie. <laughs> Moxie is incredible. Uh, fun Moxie fact. Uh, so I was in high school when Generation 5 came out and I was following the, uh, I, went, I wouldn't say the leaks, I guess the reveals online as they were coming out. And this was before global releases. So all of the information was in Japanese. And when they initially talked about Moxie, um, how they translated it uh, in like the fan translations I looked at was Earthquake Spiral. Uh, and you might be confused as to how in the world they got that. So the Japanese name of the ability is uh, Jishin Kajo. And uh, you'll see this in the edited version, but basically Japanese has three writing systems. Um, there's hiragana and katakana, which is kind of like English um, uppercase and lowercase letters. Like, not actually, but that's how I'm going to explain it simply. And then the third writing system, uh, kanji, is the one that has all the crazy, like, symbols. And Pokemon games, because they're for kids, in baseline, they're in hiragana and katakana. And Japanese has, like, fewer sounds. <laughs> so what happens is you get a lot of words that sound the same, and you can't really tell what they're supposed to mean unless you use the crazy symbols. So because of just how you write jishin kajo in Japanese, people initially thought, because this is a ground type, that it meant jishin earthquake and kajo spiral. And then once we found out that, oh, other Pokemon that have nothing to do with ground type get the same ability, they're like, okay, maybe they actually meant Jishin self-confidence and Kajo excess. This is kind of a nightmare, but I think it's kind of cool. Sandow's really good, guys. <laughs> okay, enough weebing out for now. Darumaka. 
If you've played this game or if you've watched any of uh, Shofu's videos, uh, which you may have if you're a Pokemon fan, I think he still makes videos, but he was really big back in the day. Uh, yeah, I think you already know where this thing's going. Um, I don't know about top of S, but S for sure. This thing is insane! Um, <laughs> in fact, I think it's- I'm actually gonna put it ahead of Tepig. <laughs> uh, this thing is crazy. Uh, yeah, John Smith said it right. Uh, Darmanitan is a Chad who one-shots everything. <laughs> Uh, 95 base speed is fast enough, and 140 attack is fast enough that without boosts, uh, things are dead. Things are dying. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Yeah, desert record, desert resort encounters stay winning, boys. If you're from the desert, you're probably pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, sheer force flare bits. Like the power of this thing is insane. I think like to this day, this is about as hard as you can hit like off the bat in the series. <laughs> like if you are hit by Darmanitan and you don't resist it, you're dead. You are dead. It's unfortunate that Flare Blitz deals recoil damage, but you have the HP stat to take it. And you don't even need it, because you get Fire Punch really early, and like, Fire Punch is already killing most things. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Uh, I don't think it's quite as good as um, the Sandile and uh, Drillbur boys, but it's up there. And you could maybe argue that it's better. Are we going to talk about Belly Drum? Yes, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> It's bad. I don't know why you would ever use it. Why would you spend a, a turn and half your HP uh, to max out your attack when you already one-shot everything? Don't belly drum, it's useless. Hustle Darumaki is pretty cringe. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but once you get to Darmanitan, it's not a problem. Better than Sand Island Excadrill. You could argue that, but I'm, I don't think so. Um, I think Excadrill is still better because you do get Excadrill a little bit earlier, and I think it's overall better. All right, I think that's enough for Darmanitan. It's pretty darn good. Next, Maractus. Why does this thing exist? <laughs> we already have Cacturn. It's it's so boring, but I think you'll be shocked when you see these stats, because they're actually not as bad as you would think. And this is what I mean by like power creep, because if this thing was a Gen 1 Pokemon, uh, these stats would be even worse. Still pretty bad though. <laughs> it's still pretty bad. Uh, S plus design, no way. This is a pretty boring design. It's just a cactus, guys. Uh, it's not D, right? I mean, I think we're still early enough that uh, it, it dodges the D, it dodges the D, but not by much. It's definitely C. Uh, Off-brand Petalil. <laughs> uh, I think it's actually. Is it better than Cottony? Maybe. At least it has 106 special attack. I think it's better than Cottony, but that's not saying much. Real unfortunate. But I mean, I don't think it minds so much, right? I mean, it's it, it's still dancing. It's gonna be happy no matter where it goes. Enjoy your placement at the bottom of C. Why does this Pokemon exist? Boring. Creatively bankrupt is what I would say. Move Lilligan up to S while you're there. Nice try, buddy. <laughs> C for Cactus, yeah. All right, next. Dwebble and uh, Crustle. It's one of the Pokemon available uh, in the pay to win uh, Chinese fiasco that is Pokemon Unite. I think you'll be a little bit surprised by these stats. Uh, I, I thought that uh, this thing had, I thought this thing was just like a wall, but look at this. 105 attack, that's not bad at all. Uh, and yeah, Fire Scissor says, Shell Smash time. Yeah, um, I think this thing would definitely be like, kinda bad, like C tier, except you can smash that shell. <laughs> Uh, and once you Shell Smash, you go from being a, like, defensive Pokemon to uh, you're, you're coming at him. Y you got the X-Scissor, you got the rock moves, and you're moving, like, decently fast. Uh, unfortunately, well, how long does it take to get Shell Smash? I think it takes a little bit while, a little, a little bit while. Great sentence. Uh, let's, let's check. Let's, let's be sure. No fake news here. So, Shell Smash is 43, so kind of late. Uh, unfortunately, before then, before Shell Smash, uh, it, it's not that great. Uh, but, I mean, you can Shell Smash, which makes it quite good. Uh, I think, considering how late Shell Smash is, I think I, we're going to give this a a low B. How are people feeling about that? Pretty serviceable A tier? No, no, not A tier. Mid B. I'm thinking mid to low B. It's not A, no way. Better than Monkey? No, no way. B. Low B. Yeah, I'm thinking low B. Uh, because it's pretty underwhelming until you start smashing that shell. And once you get Shell Smash, it's not, like, incredible. It's just, like, good. C 
right, remember, you have to spend a turn to Shell Smash. Middling availability, decent potential is a good way to describe it. So I think it'll go in like low B. We'll, we'll put it between Swaddle and Venipede. How about that? Better than Muna? Yeah, I agree, but you get Muna earlier. Scraggy and Scrafty. I think you guys already know. This thing's good. This thing's really good. Starts with S. I think this is an S tier Pokemon. This thing is really good. Um, and it, it's really good because of the game that it's in. So one thing that makes it S is, I mean, look at this. Hopefully you can read this. It says Moxie. I don't know how much more I have to say, but it has Moxie. So <laughs> we already talked about how good Moxie is. Uh, 90 attack is pretty good. It is good enough to get that Moxie boost. And from then on, it is uh, sweeping. So yes, it's good, but it's slow. That is true. It is slow. Or sorry, if it was the same like speed as um, Drillbur and Sandal, I would put it up there. Unfortunately, it's not. So you are going to be getting hit. You're going to be getting hit a lot. But with those defenses, you can take it. Evolves too late. 39, I mean, it's pretty late, but it's okay. Uh, also, it's worth noting that uh, this thing murders the Elite Four. This thing absolutely runs train on three out of four. Um, the only one it can't really take on is um, Marshall, the Unovan Bruno. So I think because uh, it, it's got that moxie, uh, and it just wrecks three quarters of the Elite Four. Uh, I think it's definitely an S. If it were faster, uh, it would be at the top of S, but considering it's uh, lackluster speed and doesn't really have a way to boost that, unfortunately, it can't, uh, can't Dragon Dance without breeding. I'm gonna say, yeah, worse than Bird, just under Bird, but still very, very good. And as I'm moving this, this is your chance to get in your complaints about it not being higher, but I think uh, S is fine for it. There are better fighting and dark types. I mean, yeah, there are better in fighting dark types. That's why they're, uh, that's why they're higher. <laughs> why are people talking about Archeops? It's not Archeops' turn. Yeah, Sock is higher because you get Sock earlier and because Sock like starts as a really strong Pokemon. Hot take from unregistered Reggie, Sigilyph is really good. I won't say really good, but I will agree that it is surprisingly good. So here are Sigilyph's stats. Boop, look at this. And yeah, those stats are surprisingly good. Uh, fire scissor. Sigilyph is kind of whack. Yeah, I agree. So Sigilyph is, I will agree, surprisingly good. Is it A tier good? I don't know. Right now, I'm feeling top of B. Yeah, the problem is the move pool. Uh, so it's decently fast, and you're going to get that psychic move off. Maybe you're going to be air slashing eventually. Air, air slash! slash! Uh, good stats in Magic. Well, Magic Art doesn't really do anything, unfortunately. I should be more clear. Magic Guard doesn't really do anything in the context of in-game. It's, you know, insane and competitive. One of the best abilities ever. Uh, but for in-game, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah, the desert is too strong. Uh, I think, I think it's fair to put Sigilyph at the bottom of A, is what I'm thinking. Uh, because you don't have to evolve it. It starts out this strong. And its move pool is pretty good. I believe earlier on, you're going to be using like Psybeam and Air Cutter. Um, which are like decent filler until you uh, get to Psychic and Air Slash, which, which you're really going to be using. Yeah, people have mentioned like Cosmic Power, Stored Power. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a gimmick. Uh, you wouldn't be using that in game. That takes forever. But I think uh, bottom of A, we'll put it ahead of Throw. I think it's actually a little bit better than Throw. I think that's about where it belongs. It's it's good against Unovan Bruno, uh, Marshall, but you got to be careful because a lot of his Pokemon have rock moves that'll just like destroy you. And this isn't quite good enough to Oko all of them, but I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, and uh, we may as well, because we are here, we can talk about this move that it gets uh, in Gen 5. Chat, no cheating. Synchronoise. What does this move do? And it says 120 base power, but in Gen 5 it was, it was actually um, 70 base power. What does Synchronoise do? Can somebody tell me? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a hint, it's really bad. <laughs> Yes, it hits targets with the same type as you. So it's going to hit other Pokemon that are Psychic type. And Psychic resists Psychic with a 70 base power move. <laughs> what? <laughs> and yes, Synchronoise is usable on Umbreon, which is a dark type, which means it does, no does nothing. This is probably one of the worst moves in Pokemon history. It is horrible. <laughs> Don't use Synchronoise. <laughs> oh, it, it hard counters Halucha, yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but we're not holding that against Sigilyph, because obviously you don't have to use it. <laughs> uh, Yamask. Um, I think this is one of the one of the early 
Pokedex entries that implies that, well, not even implies, straight up states that ghost type Pokemon like used to be humans. Uh, Cause it like cries when it remembers when it used to be human. That's so sad. Cofagrius, I don't actually think you can uh, trade this Pokemon uh, because of unfortunate words that are in its base name. I mean, it doesn't have to do with its tearing, but that's uh, a not so fun fact. Uh, Cofagrius, it's really slow, but I mean, it's not that bad because it's so slow and it's not like exceptionally offense on offense. I don't think we can put it uh, any higher than C, but it's fine. Uh, in terms of like defensive Pokemon, this is about what you want. Good defenses on both sides and it can hit decently hard off of 75 base attack, right? I mean, it doesn't die, but how good is not dying in an in-game playthrough? Not that great. So I th I'm thinking we're gonna put it uh, in C tier below Audino is what I'm thinking. Uh, level 34 evolution, meh, not too late, but not too early. Uh, this is a good trick room setter, but uh, I don't think you should be using trick room in game. So I think it's gonna go, um, I'm gonna put it right above Audino, I think is where it belongs. Tortuga. What's the title of like Jack Sparrow? Something of Tortuga. Jester of Tortuga, yeah, that's it. The Jester of Tortuga. Anyway, let's talk about this actual Pokemon. I went to the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> we want Caracosta. All right, so it's a water type, that's good. It's a rock type, that's not as good, but it, it, we can't hold it against it that much. It's really slow, but you can smash that shell. And we should check what level it actually gets to smash its shell, because that's important. <laughs> uh, let's see, we want Gen 5, and we are shell smashing at. Level 40, so about the same as Crustle. Yeah, it is not great, <laughs> uh, but it is not bad. In fact, I, I think um, it basically is Water Dwebble, and Water is better than Bug. So I think we're gonna put it right above Dwebble, is what I'm thinking. Any complaints? Uh, you don't get the fossils that late, I don't think. Caracosta is usable, you just have to grind. What level is the evolution? 37? That's kinda late. Oh, you get the fossils below fourth, before fourth gym? Yeah, okay, I'm thinking uh, right above Dwebble is where it belongs. Is not that great until you both evolve it and start smashing that shell. And once you do, it's like, okay. Uh, but do keep in mind that you have to uh, spend a turn to shell smash, uh, which is annoying. Where's my mouse cursor? Okay, we're gonna give it a B. We're gonna put it right above Dwebble. Shell smash buddies. All right. Arkin. And Archeops. Are you ready? No comment as I move this thing. It's really good. It's insane. And before you, before you like complain in the chat, look at this, look at this, look at this. 110 speed, 112 special attack, 140 attack, insane. Oh, oh, look at this, but 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 in the chat, oh, but defeatist, but defeatist. You guys are the defeatists. Do you guys know what defeatist does? So, you start with insane offensive stats, insane, but you gotta be careful because if you drop below half HP, defeatist activates, and what happens? Uh, you, you, do you faint? Uh, no. Um, do you have to recharge? Uh, no, you don't lose a turn. Um, do all your stats get halved? Uh, no. Uh, your insane stats, like offensive stats, go from, you know, out of this world to, like, kinda bad. That's it. <laughs> uh, and you're probably never going to drop below HP because you're never going to get hit because you are going to one-shot and outspeed everything. This thing is crazy. It doesn't have your speed. If it had your speed, I would be like, okay, maybe high A. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, Defeatus doesn't cut your speed. It only cuts your offenses. It's really good. <laughs> uh, it basically doesn't have a downside uh, because you're just going to one-shot everything. And in the event that you do drop below half HP, just heal, bro. Yeah, it has so much attack that even halved, it isn't terrible. It's like suspect if it gets halved, but don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, it is still below the other S tiers because uh, you do get it a little bit later. And I mean, Defeatist is a thing, right? It does exist. So you can't ignore it, but I mean, you can mostly ignore it. I think it's S. This thing is super good. And also, it's one of the only, like, models, like Gen 6 3D models, that is actually amazing. <laughs> like, a lot of the... Um, newer models are like kind of lifeless and bland, but Archeops is hilarious. It's like trying to stay in the air. It's so good. I love it. 
Uh, but I'm not factoring that in. Independent from its amazing model, it's really good. Uh, yeah, Silver, exactly. Can't take damage if everything is dead. Congratulations. Resurrected from a fossil straight into S. Good job. All right, who's next? Uh-oh. It's Trubbish. It's Trubbish. Garbador. In my Discord server, the seller, link in the description. Every type has a, uh, a small emote, uh, which basically represents some of the worst that the type has to offer. And for poison, Trubbish is what I elected to use. This thing's really bad. This thing is really bad. It might actually be our first entry into D. It's pretty darn terrible. It basically does nothing. Uh, so like, these are your evolved stats, nothing stands out, and it basically only uses poison moves, which might actually be the worst offensive type in the game, like worse than grass. This thing's really bad. I, I honestly can't think of any like redeeming factors that would even get this into C, like even considering that you get it, like, not even early, but, like, not that late. There's nothing for it. It's bad, guys. I think it's actually D. <laughs> uh, are there any uh, Trubbish evangelists that would like to speak on Trubbish's behalf? I don't think so. It's, it's bad, guys. It is really good in the TCG. That is true. Garbatoxin is amazing, but uh, it's not a TCG <laughs> tier list. That is true. It does have the honor of being the first D-tier Pokemon in this tier list. There's worse stuff in C? I don't think so, man. I don't think you could make a claim that the Pokemon in C are worse than Trubbish. They can at least do something. Trubbish is awful. Like, bro, worse than Audino? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely worse than Audino. You get Audino earlier, and Audino learns way better moves. Like, look, like what really kills Trubbish and Garbodor is the move pool. Like, look at this. Look at this. Nothing but normal and poison moves over here. And, like, you can get, like, Thunderbolt? Like, what? This thing's terrible. This thing does basically nothing. It's D. I'm sorry. Trubbish should be an F. I'm not making a tier just to put Trubbish there. Minchino. And eventually, Chinchino. So, Minchino really sucks. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you can Shiny Stone it. Uh, and evolve it to uh, Chinchino, which is like, okay. <laughs> S in my heart. Uh, it's not going to be an S. But uh, you can get Technician. So the whole like gimmick of Chinchino is that it's supposed to use multi-hit moves. You can't get Skill Link yet, but you can get Technician. Uh, so you're basically like rolling the dice. If you get uh, a lot of hits on your multi-hit moves, it's okay. But if you don't, it really sucks. <laughs> um, so it basically oscillates between being like a B-ish tier Pokemon if you get all the hits and like a C tier Pokemon if you don't. So I think considering that, I'm, I'm feeling like a mid C, C tier placement. Yeah, it's basically like a gimmick Pokemon, but like it doesn't have the tools to fully utilize its gimmick. Yeah, I would put it above your mask is about what I'm thinking. It belongs in S for resembling Esper. No. This is far better than Patrat. I agree, but you get Patrat earlier. And we're gonna put it like here, right above your mask. Yeah, I think that's fine for it. How is Basculin not S or even A? I'm not sure if that's a serious comment or not. <laughs> Beat up King's Rock. <laughs> Minchino, interesting strategy. Too cute, so it's top of S. Guys, aesthetics do not factor at all, otherwise Sock would be like, deleted, okay? <laughs> Adaptability is so good on Basculin. It's okay. That's why it's not in C. <laughs> I could see Basculin in S or high A. Whoa, what is this like a Basculin lobby that is attempting to save Basculin from the bottom of B? No, no way. Adaptability Aqua Tail is, did you guys play the same game as I did? Adaptability water moves, it's like, it would be good on a Pokemon that's not Basculin. I, I won't hear any more of this. This basculine, what's the opposite of slander? Um, basculine astroturfing? The grass types, they're in the chat, trying to boost up basculine. Basculine should be S, what? Mods, mods, deal with this. Basculine propaganda, that's it. No basculine propaganda. Gothitaline. This is another one of those 
uh, like really, really slow psychic types that I think is just here for trick room strats. Okay-ish, well, I mean, it's not that slow. 65 is pretty slow, but I guess by gen five standards, it's not that slow <laughs> because ugly. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a slower, more defensive psychic type. Eh, eh, I'm thinking C. I think the best word to describe it is okay-ish. It's whatever. Um, it's hidden ability. Shadow tag is like bannable in competitive, but this isn't competitive and we're not considering hidden abilities and shadow tag is useless in game anyway. Reuniclus is way better. I agree. And Reuniclus is next. So I think we are going to put uh, the Gothitelle line, I don't know, like high C is what I'm thinking. Uh, I think in the end, you get you get more out of it than Purloin and uh, Hatchrat, but I, I I think even P Dove is is better than it overall. Any uh, any riots about this placement? <laughs> Don't compare this to Gardevoir. Gardevoir is better, I think. Yeah, the Solasis line into Reuniclus. One twenty five special attack, beautiful. Thirty speed, not beautiful, but. <laughs> Uh, it's sort of the uh, psychic type equivalent of timber. It's not as good, but it is pretty darn good. Um, sort of the same thing where you're going to get hit, you're going to move second, but once you move, you're going to knock out whatever you're fighting. The debate is going to be, it's definitely a decent Pokemon. It's, it's going to be either high B or low A. I'm thinking right above Muna. Uh, because you get it later than Muna and you, you have to put quite a bit more work into it, but once it's in Solus's form, it is just like better Muna. Unfortunately, a lot of its uh, power comes from Magic Guard and like Magic Guard Life Orb, which it can't take advantage of during your in-game playthrough. I'm thinking above Muna. Are there any complaints? There definitely will be complaints. Uh, <laughs> look at Solasis's stats. I've looked at them, I'll show you all. Um, they're pretty surprising. Solasis's stats are, it's basically like special attack, <laughs> and like nothing else. Which, I mean, hey, that's not bad. If you're gonna take all in one stat, I'd have it be an offense. Any riots? Abra but slow. Yeah, I guess Abra but slow, which is unfortunate because being fast is what makes Abra really good. <laughs> I think Sigilyph is better. I think Sigilyph is significantly better because it's way faster. It's strong enough to kill things and it also starts as Sigilyph. You don't have to evolve it up at all. Sigilyph is definitely better. Uh, Ducklet and Swana. Is this thing a C tier Pokemon? SEA C tier? It's uh, it's pretty underwhelming. Look at this. Oof. It's decently fast, but it's not that fast. It maybe moves first. And then what? Like, what is this going to do? 87 attack, 87 special attack. I mean, water typing is good. Oof. Oof. Uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely whelming. Get Scald and Air yeah, Slash, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, like, right below Pidov is what I'm thinking. Uh, also, Ducklet really, really sucks. Like, look at this. Yeah, we're putting it in uh, C. Ducklet's horrible. Horrible. And Swana is, like, mediocre. So I think we're going to go ahead and put it uh, right below the Pidov line. This thing's worse than uh, Gothitelle. There we go. <laughs> worse than Trubbish. No, it's not that bad. It, it is really not impressive. Aqua Ring Roost? No. <laughs> no. We're gonna use two moves and two turns to do nothing? Absolutely not. No. Next. Oh. Oh, it's this thing. All right. All right, here we go. The Vanillite line. Vanillite, Vanillish, Vanillux. So to fully understand why this is my least favorite Pokemon of all time, and why it legitimately almost made me quit Pokemon. We have to go back to 1635 Japan, okay? So in the year 1635, uh, the Shogun of Japan uh, named Tokugawa Iemitsu issued a decree known as Sakoku. So Sakoku literally means like sealed country. And this was when Japan really kicked isolationism into overdrive. It was, you know, a loner beforehand because it was a, an island nation. But now this is when they officially said, foreigners, you are not getting in. Nuh-uh. And they were very strict about it. Basically, if you weren't like a Dutch dude bringing like clocks to the port of Nagasaki, you were not getting in. They stuck to that policy for over 200 years. 
you were not getting in until in the mid uh, 1800s, the mid to late 1800s, an American, of course, uh, by the name of Matthew Perry, the exact same name as the Friends actor, but I think uh, probably a different guy. He approached the Bay of Tokyo with a boat with guns, a gunboat. Uh, and uh, to rip off a line from a <laughs> History of Japan view you've probably all seen, he decreed to the uh, Shogun, open the country. Stop having it be closed. Uh, I mean, Japan had the option, open the country or be destroyed. Uh, and they chose to open the country. So after 200 years of almost exact isolation, finally, the country was open. And because of that horrible mistake in the late 1860s, about another 100 years later, in the 90s, a British man by the name of James Turner would enter Japan, join Game Freak, and make a Pokemon that I don't like. I hate this thing so much. It's literally just an ice cream cone with a smiley face. It's the worst design ever. I hate it. And because Gen 5 came out when I was in high school, this is like exactly the phase where I'm like, oh man, is Pokemon cool? Is it not? And then you see this thing? I almost didn't buy Black and White because of this thing. Horrible. James Turner didn't make Vanillax. Yes, he did. Did he not? Did I lie to you? I'll check in editing. This thing's just horrible. James Turner made Shadow Lugia? Yeah, fine, he made a recolor. Okay, good, good job, James. Vanillax is bad, but Magnemite is good? No, I didn't say Magnemite is good, but I think it's better than this. There being other inanimate Pokemon that are bad doesn't mean that this thing isn't the worst. And you know what we're gonna do? We are gonna do a special, okay? This is now an art stream, okay? Because I already have Photoshop open. We are gonna go ahead and we are gonna make a better ice cream Pokemon than Vanillite, okay? Here we go, here we go. Welcome to my art stream. Can you see this? No, you can't. No, my art stream dreams. No, James Turner is destroying my ability to, oh my God, guys, James Turner hacked my computer and he's preventing me from, okay, we might have to do this in MS Paint. Yes, here we go. You can see this for sure. So uh, now that we have MS Paint open, we are gonna go ahead and uh, make a better ice type. A uh, better ice cream Pokemon than Vanillux shouldn't be too hard. So we're gonna pick up. We're gonna pick a nice blue, I think. Here, uh, we want a, a nice, a nice thick brush, right? There you go, nice and thick. So here's our base form. Got to go ahead and give it a give it a smiley face, and uh, we need to give it a, a, an original name, right? So we'll go ahead and. Uh... So normally you just take like two words, mash them up, right, and uh, you spell it wrong. So let's name it uh, nice. There you go. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, and then we got to make an evolution, so we'll go ahead and copy this, and uh, we'll make it we'll make it a little bigger, right? Got to make it bigger, uh, and we maybe want to give it a bit more character. So I think we'll uh, we'll make one of the, we'll give it like one eye, and it'll be like kind of angry, right? It's kind of mad, all right. So now it's not nice. In fact, we'll actually uh, we'll make it angry. We'll, we'll give it a mouth, and uh, so because it's not so nice anymore, we'll go ahead and name it Nice Cream because it's like kind of screaming. So now we've got two stages, but we want to go for the trifecta, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, copy this again. And it's a third stage, so we, we, we've got to make we got to make this a little bit uh, different. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we'll make it a trade evolution just to make it extra obnoxious. And we'll say that if you uh, if you trade it with a Garbodor, uh, some of the Garbodor like it gets stuck in the top of the thing. So here's like, uh, we got some like Garbodor chunks in here. Some Garbodor chunks it becomes a, an ice poison type, so it gets, it gets it gets a little bit of personality that way. And uh, I guess uh, we can name this thing like Fudge, but we got to spell that wrong, right? So uh, we'll fudge the spelling. Looks good to me. And there you go. There is a premium three-stage evolution. You got nice. You got nice scream, and then you get Fudge. Fudge this line. I hate them so much. Uh, so soon, uh, nice, nice cream and fudge NFTs will be available. Uh, I look forward to your support. Uh, in terms of vanillite in game, it's okay. It's pretty bad. I, I don't think it's good at all. Uh, we we aren't talking about uh, aesthetics at all. It's like a mid game ice type. That's not good. Its stat total is actually really high. 535 is like on par with starters, but the distribution is ass. <laughs> like this 95 base attack may as well be zero. It's worthless. Uh, it's pretty bad. I think it's gonna be like a bottom of C. And also, yeah, the evolution levels are horrible. It doesn't actually reach Vanillix until 47, which is 
awful. It is so late. Basically the end of the game. It's not quite D, but probably like bottom of C. I hate this thing. It's not good. It's not worse than Trubbish, no. It's better than Trubbish, but not by much. And that's that. We're now done with that whole segment. I hope too many people didn't leave. <laughs> and hopefully it wasn't too boring. No snow warning makes it bad. Well, I mean, snow warning, like, wouldn't even be good because it'll then just hurt your team. <laughs> snow warning can't hurt your team if you use an all-ice team. Think, cheese, think. Deerling and Sawsbuck. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. I think with these stats, like, nothing is impressive here. Uh, but I think it... I think it actually goes in low B. Yeah. Uh, mainly because uh, you can get jump kick. Uh, if this couldn't get jump kick, I'd probably put it in C. Uh, but you get horn leech uh, for like an okay physical grass move. You get stab return. Uh, and you get jump kick. Yeah, it's fine. Um, not an all star by any means. Uh, but for what it is, it's basically like a normal type with like a little bit, a little bit of extra oomph. You get that grass type. Um, which is fine when it's like a dual type. And you get jump kick. Um, is it better than Basculin? Yeah, I think so. I'd put it above Basculin. I guess the, the Basculin in A or S crew is going to riot, but uh, yeah, I think Deerling's a little bit better. Uh, it has more of a niche to fill, right? B tier for Saucebuck, yes. Another hot take. Emolga isn't irredeemable garbage. Uh, I don't know if it's that hot of a take, because th that is also my take. I think as far as Pika clones go, Emolga is... Okay. I won't say it's irredeemable garbage, but it's, um, it's kind of bad. <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of bad. Um, it's at least fast. So, I mean, it moves first and then what? Uh, it's not going to be D, but it is not going to be B. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking low C. Uh, yeah, pretty much the best thing you can do with Amoga is Volt Switch to a better Pokemon. <laughs> uh, but hey, Electric Flying Typing is really good. And yeah, you can use Acrobatics. You can use Volt Switch. The, like the typing alone is is worth more than a D, I would say. Emolga is the best Pika clone. I don't know about that. Maybe it depends on if you count Mimikyu as a Pika clone. Because uh, if Mimikyu is a Pika clone, then Mimikyu is definitely the best. But you could also say that it's so different than other Pika clones that it doesn't actually count. We'll put it above Vanillite. I think I think it's better than Vanillite. Uh, because for Vanillite to be mediocre, you have to evolve it all the way. Whereas Emolga is mediocre right at the start. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough about Emolga. Nobody's riding in low C. I think that's okay. Carablast and Excavalier. So, surprise, surprise, this thing is really slow. But, look at these stats. Ooh, ooh. 135 attack. Great defenses on both sides. Uh, okay, HP. This thing is really good, but I think they got a little bit too cute with the evolution. <laughs> like, trade evolutions to begin with are really annoying, but for this one, you have to actually trade it with Shelmets. Uh, I, I don't know if we're counting that against it. Uh, it's really annoying, but on stats alone, it would be an A tier, right? It's, it's, one of the, it's in the crew that's really slow, and then it one-shots you. But I think considering uh, the lower availability and the fact that it is, you know, slow, I think it's capping out at B. Yeah, you can evolve it as soon as you get it, uh, assuming you have the right, like, trade partner. Um, and I think this is actually better than Axel Gore. I'm thinking, like, high B is where it's gonna go. I, I think I'm I'm gonna put it, like, with Solasis. Uh, because it's kind of in the same category of get hit and then one-shot the opponent. With okay availability. B for better than Snivy. I don't think it's better than Snivy, no. Everything is above Snivy. That's not true, like, Snivy is in the upper half. It's a starter, guys. It's really not that bad. All right. Fungus. Amoongus. All right, get it out of your system, okay? Sus. Sussy Baka. Amoongus. All, all of those memes. Go ahead, spam the chat. I've never played Among Us. I'm sorry. So, Amoongus. Uh, pretty darn good, specifically in doubles competitive, right? Uh, because that is where you just rage powder to draw things to yourself. You switch out and you never die because you have regenerator. You put everything to sleep with spore. It's This thing is so annoying that people actually run like safety goggles just to counter this thing. Uh, in game, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty darn bad. Honestly, it's borderline D tier. This is pretty much exactly what you don't want for in game. It is slow. It is defensive. It is utility. It is a grass type. It is a poison type. That's a lot of bad things. But it does have Spore, so it's not D. 
Oh yeah, I learned sports 62. And 50, even if you keep it as a fungus, that's terrible. Guys, this might be a D. This might be a D, yeah. It it, it just has the the exact worst skill set for an in-game playthrough. It's D, yeah. It didn't dodge the D, I'm sorry. I will put it above Trubbish. It's better than Trubbish. Because <laughs> it has the potential, maybe, eventually, to do something. Uh, and if you like, if you want to inhale that copium and think that it's not D, you can pretend that it impersonated uh, one of the higher tier Pokemon, okay? You can go ahead and tell yourself that Timber is actually an Amoongus in disguise or whatever. Uh, but as far as this tier list is concerned, uh, it, it's a D. It's bad. All right, the Frillish line. Uh, possible contenders for the SEHC tier, if such a thing existed. But... I think in terms of, like, Pokemon that tend towards defensive, uh, the Frillish line is pretty good. It's not a D tier. No way. No way. I think it's very comparable to Yamask, uh, but it gets that bonus uh, of that water typing, which is a really big bonus. Uh, I'm thinking it's either going to be with Yamask or, like, very bottom of B. What level is the evolution? Level 40? Okay, it's going in C, guys. <laughs> it's it's going in C. Um, if it evolved earlier, I'd probably put it uh, bottom of B, but uh, with a level 40 evolution, uh, no. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll basically put it with Yamask, a little bit above, because you can uh, you can use that uh, Water Stab. Is it only available on a certain day? I don't think so. I think it's just like filler that you find while you're surfing, right? Drifloon is like a ghost type that's only available on a certain day and looks kind of like this Pokemon. <laughs> And yeah, fr Frillish is pretty bad. <laughs> Frillish is pretty bad, and uh, Jellicent is only okay. But it was mentioned in the chat by Moderator Beth. You can run Energy Ball on Jellicent and watch people on Pokemon Showdown have an absolute meltdown. <laughs> Rest in Pringles. Alamomola. Uh, for some reason, not a love disc in evolution. I have no idea why. This is a C tier Pokemon if I've ever seen one. SEA C tier, but uh, it is actually like horrible. <laughs> um, like I looked at its stats uh, yesterday. Get ready, guys. Disgusting. 40 special attack. 40. This might be a D tier Pokemon, guys. This might be a D tier Pokemon. I'm I'm really leaning towards D. It's it's a water type. That's worth something. It might not be enough. Because you can't even use Scald with this thing. It's bad. Ah, uh, it's bad. <laughs> it's a it's a D guys. Uh I think it's actually worse than Trubbish. This thing's so bad. <laughs> Und da da D horrible. Yeah, I guess in competitive, you can maybe do something with this, because, like, you can actually stall and, like, not use your horrible attacking stats, but in-game, goodbye. <laughs> Joltik! Really cute. Also, pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. It's gonna be high B or low A. Uh, it, it, it could be A if it evolved earlier. Galvantula is pretty good. Uh, but it is stuck as Joltik for a, a little while, and Joltik kind of sucks. <laughs> like, look at Joltik. Uh, but once you get to Galvantula at level 36, which isn't that bad, you get it at, like, high 20s, I think? Once you get to Galvantula, this uh, 97 special attack is kind of suspect, but you can be dropping those compound eyes thunders, uh, which make up for the uh, poor uh, special attack. Well, not even poor special attack, just, like, okay special attack. I think, uh, yeah, high B tier is where it should go. I think I'm going to put it next to Blitzel is where... I think it's a little bit worse than Blitzel uh, because you get Blitzel so much earlier. But uh, once Galvantula is online with those Compound Eyes Thunders, it's pretty strong. And you can also you can also start buzzing. And, uh, like, notably, this thing is better against the Elite Four than Blitzel is uh, because Bug-type does very well against the Gen 5 Elite Four. Uh, it's also good against... Uh, uh, gets this is Hydreigon because it's faster. High B tier uh, next to Blitzel is is about where it belongs. And I'm giving Blitzel the edge just because uh, Blitzel you do get earlier. Oh, Bug Buzz at 60, that's unfortunate. I guess you're going to be using Signal Beam. Ferris Seed. So as far as defensive Pokemon go, uh, it really doesn't get much better than Ferrothorn. This thing is like min-maxed to the max. 
like, it could not have better stats. I mean, I guess it could have, like, zero special attack and those distributed better, but, like, this is about as good as you can ask for. Uh, it's got really low speed, which is actually good, uh, because once you're below, like, 50 speed, you're never moving first anyway, and notably, Gyro Ball works off of how much faster your opponent is than you as a multiple. So I believe it maxes out in power when your opponent is four times faster than you. The slower you are, the easier it is for your opponent to be faster than you. I know that's like obvious. Remember, they have to be four times as fast as you for max power. So if you only have 10 speed, 40 speed is already four times faster. But if you have 20 speed, then you need to go to 80 speed to be four times faster. So it's like multiplicative. You gotta be careful. Gyro Ball hits really hard. So yeah, Gyro Ball unfortunately is not as good in game as mentioned because the opponent has like bad speed stats as well and they're uninvolved. But like Ferrothord being slow is still important because it like kind of helps you use it if you want to. What, what you're actually going to be using is Power Whip. Because <laughs> uh, Power Whip is 120 base power. Like 94 base attack is not bad at all. Unfortunately, a level 40 evolution is kind of high. For Nuzlocke's, uh, I would probably give this either a high A or like an S, it's incredible. Uh, but for in-game playthroughs where all this utility doesn't really matter, I'm gonna say it's it's gonna be a C, guys. I, I think I'm gonna put it next to Cotney. Uh, I think it's good enough to dodge, it dodges D because you can actually fight with it eventually, but there's just much better things you could use. B at least, no way, no way. Have it above Maractus? No, not a shot, man. No way. Maractus is better. Maractus is faster. Maractus has 106 special and you get it way earlier. And you don't have to evolve it. Maractus is better. Clink, Clang, and uh, Clink Clang. Uh, can you say creatively bankrupt? These have also got to be some of the worst designs in the game. Wow. One gear. Two gears. Three gears. We did it, guys. At least it wasn't made by James Turner. Whatever. We're not going to do another paint segment, but I also hate this thing. Independent of me hating it, I see it in the chat, extremely late evolution. Yeah, look at this. 38 even to get to Clang, the mid-stage, and then 49 to Kling Clang. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. It's not quite D because once you do get to Kling Clang, I mean, these stats are okay. Um, you get, uh, I think, um, Gear Grind, which is like a pretty good move. I I'm thinking C. <laughs> Low B at best. I, I think even that's too generous. I'm thinking like above Ferrisseed, basically. I mean, if you're you're a steel type, you're probably not gonna die. And it's a little bit more offensively minded than Ferrothorn, which I think makes it better for the kind of tier list we're going for. Like to be in D, you gotta be real bad. <laughs> you gotta be real bad. And this thing is just it it's pretty bad. It is that bad. It's not it, it's not that bad. It's close though. It's it's close. <laughs> it's close. You could I think you you could argue it uh, you could argue it being D. I could see it, but I personally am gonna put it uh, in C. Uh, I I said you have to be really bad to be in D. Uh, Tynamo is really bad. It goes in D. Uh, good lord, this thing is horrible. Like I I before I looked at all these stats like in preparation for this list. I was going to be like, I mean, Electros is fine. I mean, it's probably going to be in like B. You guys, you don't know. Guys, you don't know. So look at this. So here's Tynamo stats. Here's Tynamo stats. Did, did you bring like uh, a barf bag? These are Tynamo stats. It only learns like, I think like takedown or like tackle through like level up. You can teach it TMs. But you do you know how long you're stuck with this thing for? Do you know what level it evolves into even electric? 39. 39. You are stuck with this. This. Until 39. And then you can Thunderstone it right away to um, uh, Electros, who's like, okay. Yeah, this is a D. <laughs> this is a D. <laughs> oh my god. If this thing evolved into um, Electric at like level like 20? 25? It would probably be a low C Pokemon. But no way, this thing is a D for sure. It has no weakness and a great move pool. Okay, it has no weakness, great. What is it doing? <laughs> That's great, it has no weakness. It's still gonna die in one hit. <laughs> you get experience here. So you are gonna use your experience share to sap experience from Pokemon that you're actually using, give it to this thing until it's level 39. And in the end, uh, after you Thunderstone, you end up with this, which is like, yeah, it's okay. 
but it's 50 base speed. Yeah, like, no weakness doesn't mean anything, guys. Like, no weakness means you don't take two double damage from anything. You can still die. Yeah, and there's also the problem with the encounter rate. It's a real hassle to get. You're going to be spending, like, 30, 40 minutes just to catch it. And then you're going to be doing, like, what, Lucky Egg switch training with experience share just to get this thing to the point where it's usable? Absolutely not. It's a D. It's a D. Uh, what's next? Oh, this thing. Okay. No cheating, guys. Oh, somebody already did it. Okay, I was gonna ask if people actually knew what the, uh, what the unevolved form of this next thing was called. <laughs> but yeah, it's called, uh, El Elgium, and then it evolves into Behium. Uh, wow, a, a really slow psychic type, uh, with good special attack. Have, have we seen those before in this region? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why there's so many of these. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's late game. Uh, analytic, unfortunately, is a hidden ability, so it does not have analytic. It's pretty slow, so it's gonna get hit, but it has good special attack, so when it hits you, it's probably gonna knock you out. Unfortunately, we're getting into the point of the game, uh, where availability really starts to matter. So this is where I expect people who are just joining to be like, how is this Pokemon worse than Patrat? Well, it's because you get Patrat earlier. You get this thing, you're getting like really late game for this, or like mid to late game. I don't really like it. Uh, I think it's a C tier Pokemon. Uh, you have better options for slow psychic types that hit really hard. Uh, I'm gonna put it like, I think it's better than these guys. I think about here is where it belongs. Because uh, it does hit pretty hard once once you actually do get the hit. <laughs> Steel Wing Elgium, though. Yeah. So due to a, um, I guess an oversight is what you would call it. It's not really a bug. Uh, due to an oversight, uh, this thing is able to learn Steel Wing. I don't know why you'd use it, though, but it's cool. Oh, Litwick. Okay. Uh, the Litwick line, in terms of, like, inanimate Pokemon designs, I think Litwick is the best there is. It's so cute. <laughs> uh, and it... I think this is like what inanimate design should be, because on paper, like, it's a candle, it's a lamp, it's a chandelier, but you combine it with like the concept of like ghosts and like the will-o'-wisp, great design. I love it. But unfortunately, that doesn't count. Litwick, once you get it to Chandelure, is really good. <laughs> uh, I'll show you Chandelure stats, get ready. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fast enough, like it's a little bit on the slow side at 80, but it's you're definitely going to be outspeeding things. And 145 special attack, beautiful. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you get this thing kind of late, and it doesn't evolve into Lampent until like 41. You can Dusk Stone it immediately once you get it to Lampent, but like, eh. I think for the potential it has, because Chandelure is pretty good. I think this is like a top of C tier Pokemon, is what I'm thinking. You have to invest in it to get it to Shanda, uh, Lampent, and then you can evolve it right away, and once you get it there, it's good. It's uh, it's no Electros, I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. B at least? No. Litwick is pretty bad, man. Yeah, like top of C, like bottom of B is where I think it would go. I really like this Pokemon. I wish it was a better for, for in-game. Axew line. I think this is actually a top of B Pokemon. It's a top of B, I think. So, I mean, look look at this. Like, you don't have to be able to see the number to see that this is, a, this is a really high number. It is 147. But, in terms of, like, Pokemon that join you late, this is uh, pretty much the only one that's worth it. Uh, and the main reason I say that is because uh, Axew itself is actually usable. Like, uh, 87 attack is... It's not great, but it's okay. These, these other ones, like, uh, Litwick sucks. Uh... <laughs> But Axew itself is okay, it's not great. 38 to uh, Fracture, who is significantly better, and Haxorus itself is very, very, very good. Um, you can basically just press a dragon move and delete your opponent. <laughs> if you got this thing earlier, it would probably be A or even S. How is Chandelure gonna be worse than Basculin? Because you get Basculin earlier, and it starts out better than Litwick, that's why. So Fracture, enjoy your place at the top of B. I think it actually goes there. Because sort of the power you get if you invest into it is like unrivaled. <laughs> you, you can just turn off your brain, press a dragon move, and just destroy everything. Uh, this is part of the reason why they added fairy, because you could do insane stuff like Haxorus. What, what are you doing against this thing? Nothing. Haxorus is a Chad. Alright, now we're getting into some, uh, 
some trash. <laughs> so, Cubchu and Beartick. Uh, in, in my Discord of the seller, every type has an emote for bad Pokemon of that type. And Cubchu is uh, one of the two for ice. Uh, don't be deceived, this doesn't have 130 attack. It has 110, it was buffed later. Uh, this thing is a slow late game ice type. I mean, you're gonna be doing okay damage if you hit. Good luck with that. <laughs> Because uh, you're going to move second and you're going to die because you're an ice type and you evolve at level 37. Uh, this might be like a top of D Pokemon. Honestly, if Vanillite is bottom of C, this thing is top of D. It's bad. It's bad. Like, I mean, you can compare this kind of to Rog and Rolla. So why is Rog and Rolla all the way at the top while Cub Chew is all the way at the bottom? So Rog and Rolla, when you get way earlier, um, it actually has the defenses to survive a hit because, I mean, it is going to be moving second. Uh, Ice is the single worst type in the game, and we have 50 base speed, you're not moving first. Yeah, 95, 80, 80 isn't awful defenses, but you're an Ice type, you're just gonna die. <laughs> you're just gonna die. It's terrible. I think it's like top of D. D for Bear Tick is insultingly low. C. It's bad, guys. It's, it's real bad. <laughs> no. Alright, Cryogonal. Cryogonal. It's like a late game defensive ice type. At least it's 105 base speed and 95 special attack. So you can probably go first and like ice beam something. That's something. It's not D tier, but it's pretty bad. Uh, I'm gonna say it's like very, very bottom of C. Cause at least you can get a move off whereas Cubchu just dies. And it can learn a track despite being a uh, <laughs> A genderless Pokemon, that's true. Yeah, I mean, you get a decently fast Ice Beam. That's something. It's not much, but it's something. <laughs> defensive Ice type, choose one. Well, Game Freak did, and they keep making these weird defensive Ice types. Oh yeah, uh, also noting that um, its defense actually got buffed. Uh, it actually has 30 uh, base defense in Gen 5, so if this thing gets hit in true Ice type fashion, it dies. Shelmet and Axelgore. So it's really fast, so it moves first. And then it actually does kind of decent damage, it's got 100 special attack. But like, what moves are you actually using? You're gonna be using like, Bug Buzz eventually once you learn it. And like, Giga Drain, I, I guess. Uh, it is really cool. Uh, but this thing is definitely worse than, what's the counterpart? The Escavalier. Gets Focus Blast, oh, oh you don't want to use that, but you can. Low to mid C, uh, it's, it's very late. You'd think you'd get it with um, Escavalier, but you don't. It's like significantly later. Yeah, worse than early game bugs for sure. I'm thinking like around like Cottony. That's where I'm gonna put it. Should have been Bug Dark. I agree. I think once you uh, once you get it to Axel Gore. Well, first of all, once you get it because it's available quite late, and it has like that really annoying evolution, which I, I'm not, I'm trying not to hold against it, but with this one, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's all right. It's, like, no matter what, it's definitely worse than Escavalier, because Escavalier is actually, like, strong. Can somebody check, is it possible to actually get Shelmet outside of, uh, Driftvale? No, Shelmet is only in, um, Icarus. That's what I thought. I guess by that, you could also say, then, that maybe Escavalier should be lower, because you can't actually evolve it until you can get Shelmet, but, I mean, that's so weird, because you have to consider that you're trading, and, like, maybe the, your trade partner has a Shelmet already? I, I don't know, man, that, it, it, that gets really tricky. Imagine giving away a Scavalier and getting Axel Gore. Bad deal, guys. Alright, Stunfisk. Uh, so one of the most memed Pokemon of all time, I think it's actually the the face of the competitive Pokemon subreddit, Stunfisk. Uh, I mean, this thing's not great, but it's at least usable. Like, it's not D. <laughs> um, like, Earth Power Discharge, Earth Power Thunderbolt. Uh, yeah, um, if you got this at the beginning of the game, I'd probably make it a B. I think this one you get outside of um, Drift Fail, right? It's in like the ponds. And like 81 special tag is not great, but it's okay. B tier? No way. No way. It, this thing gets earth power, right? I'm not crazy, right? Gen 5. Where's the earth power? This thing's kind of bad. Gets mud bomb. <laughs> no earth power, no justice. A uh, Scald is pretty good. Is it only outside of Icarus? Ooh, that's bad. Yikes. Well, in that case, uh, I don't I don't know if it's it's D because D is like really bad. I'm thinking bottom of C because like ground electric is actually like a pretty good type. Skull right away, slow so you're gonna get hit. What does it have over Trubbish? A lot. <laughs> it is way better than Trubbish. 
Limbron and Electric type though, I don't think Electric types were immune to paralysis until Gen 6. But Bronk uses it in the anime, and Bronk also has an Onyx, so it has to be good. Flawless logic, uh, S tier, no. And Limber wasn't a total meme, because you could get paralyzed by like, body slam, I guess, but I don't know. <laughs> Definitely a mean Pokemon, a meme Pokemon, but I mean, it's not D tier bad. Ooh, Mianfu and Mianxiao. So Mianxiao, once you get it, is insane. Look at this. Look at this. 105 speed, incredible. 125 attack, beautiful. High jump kicking, incredible. Why is it so late? No, no, no. And it is a super late evolution as well. Yeah, level 50. Uh, Mian Fu is like, okay. 85 attack, 65 speed is okay. But I mean, that is a massive boost from evolution. And you're not getting that evolution until the very like end of the game. I don't think we can give it a D because it, it does have the potential. Uh, you gotta invest in it, but I'm thinking like mid C ish. Mian Shao is incredible, but you don't start with Mian Shao, you start with Mian Fu, and you don't have it for most of the game. So I'm thinking like above Chin, actually like below Chinchino probably, because Chinchino is actually in the game. There you go. Is Mian Shao not in Victory Road? I mean, I guess, I think you can catch in Victory Road, but then, like, that's Victory Road, the game is over. <laughs> Level 50 is D tier. Is it D tier? I don't think so. You can get to 50 by the Elite Four, that's, like, about where you'll be. Mianfu, Mianfu is in Victory Road, but it's available earlier. I think you get it outside of Dragon Spiral Tower, which isn't that much earlier, but it's a little bit earlier. Ooh, Drodagon. This thing is hideous. I'm not gonna say this is, like, a lazy design. It's not like the ice cream, right? It, it at least... Looks like something. I think this is supposed to be like the dragon on like the Welsh flag or something. I think it's ugly as sin. Uh, uh, but hey, 120 base attack, that's pretty good. Dragon Quest monster. <laughs> it's definitely not a D um, because you get it and immediately it's usable. Um, this falls into that whole category of like Pokemon that are like slow, so they'll get hit. But once they hit back, you're dead. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is very late game. Like this is Dragon Spiral Tower. But at least it's ready to go uh, right out of the box. Uh, so I think it's going to be like mid, see? Hot take, mid to high B tier. That is a hot take, yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess you could compare it to Axew. Because um, it is stronger than Axew initially. Uh, but then has a lower ceiling. But you also do get Axew like a little bit earlier. Uh, I think it's going to be like a high C tier is what I'm thinking. Let's go. It's definitely better than Ducklet. <laughs> I think like about there is fine. Um, if you could get it earlier, uh, it would be like really, really good. Um, like if you got this at the same time as Sock, like early game, it would probably be in S or at least high A, like with Timber. Uh, but no, like the availability like bumps it down a lot, I think. Sorry, Drudagon. Try, try being prettier. All right, Golurk. Uh, I actually really, really like this design. I think it's based on like the Iron Giant, which is a, is a really good movie. Uh, you should watch it if you haven't. Uh, who designed this Pokemon? Oh. Alright, James Turner. James Turner gets one point, okay? But not enough. Okay, and you know what? He just ripped this off. Of, I, I'm not gonna say it was inspired by the Iron Giant. It's an Iron Giant ripoff, okay? James Turner is creatively bankrupt. This thing's okay. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's really late. <laughs> It's really late. And one thing I should mention about uh, another like disadvantage of all of these late game Pokemon is that the stats you see here, um, I mean like these are the base stats, but remember that you get EVs in game for defeating enemy Pokemon and it takes a little while uh, to build up those EVs. So this is definitely like the point of the game where you're not going to be getting uh, all of your EVs in before the end of the game. Uh, so that even though this Pokemon has like pretty good stats, its stats might end up being worse uh, than a Pokemon with worse stats, but EVs. Uh, and this just joins the club of being a slow Pokemon that hits hard uh, once it actually gets to retaliate. Uh, so I think in that vein, it should be uh, near Drodagon, but definitely worse because it Drodagon is ready to go right away. And you do start as Golette, and you, you have to evolve, so I'm thinking it's it's gonna be uh, around Mian Xiao, maybe? It also lacks good Ghost Stab, that's correct, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't get Shadow Claw, come on! I think uh, Mian Xiao is definitely better, so we're gonna put this, uh, it's worse than Frillish, I think. I think it's actually worse than Cafagrius, because Cafagrius you get way earlier, 
And 95 base special attack to Shadow Ball with? Yeah, uh, we'll go with that. Doesn't it have Iron Fist? I think Iron... It does, but like, what does that do? Like, it boosts Shadow Punch by 20%? It's still bad. <laughs> oh, Iron Fist Shadow Punch is better than Shadow Claw? Is it? It's a 20% boost. It can also have the amazing ability Klutz, that's true. Oh, it's it's two base power more than Shadow Claw, and it never misses, wow. And it takes your ability, oops. And Shadow Claw's high crit rate, yeah. Ponyard. Justice for Ponyard, okay, because Ponyard is so cool. And Bisharp itself is like really strong. Like, look at these Bisharp stats. Look at this. 125 attack. Dark Steel typing, amazing, especially for the Elite Four. <sighs> Level 52 evolution. Justice for Bisharp, okay? Ah. Uh, like, if you could get this thing earlier, and if it evolved at a reasonable level like 30, this thing would be like S. Uh, this thing's probably like up there with Scraggy. Uh, cause I, but, uh, yeah. It's late game. It is super late game. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, F's in, F's in the chat for B-Sharp. Like, B-Sharp is a victim of its placements. Uh, it, it, it has the stats, it has the move pool to be so much better than what Game Freak gave it. I'm sorry, B-Sharp. I, I think this has to go, this has to go and, uh, has to go and see. I think I'm, I'm gonna put it next to, uh, Min Show. Uh, like, if you, like, invest in it, if you grind, it's great. Uh, but in this tier list in particular, we, we're trying to minimize that, right? We don't we don't want to be going on side quests just to make this thing usable. So sad. Bouffalant. Uh, I guess, uh, what would you call this thing? Uh, Unovan Tauros? A Tauros ripoff? Uh, at least the thing doesn't have to evolve. I mean, when you get it, it already starts with usable stats, uh, and it has low speed, which I guess is a, is a trend in this generation. So you're going to get hit. And then you'll probably knock things out with a uh, 110 attack. Uh, the greatest crime with this thing is uh, its signature move, Head Charge. So Head Charge is basically just better double edge. It's, I think, the same base power, but it has less recoil. But the Japanese name was Afro Break. Like, literally Afro Break. Why didn't they keep it? Come on. Justice for Buffalant. Uh, this thing's, nah, it's like low C. Yeah. It's basically just way too late to do anything. Like, you're at the very end of the game, are you gonna use, like, a slow, normal type? Just just use Lillipup, bro. You've had Lillipup for the entire game. I don't know, above Stunfisk, I guess? Yeah, I think it's better than Stunfisk. There you go, Buffalant. Buffalant. How's that? Any any complaints about uh, a Buffalant bottom of C? Better than Snivy? No way. No way, man. I don't like grass types, but Snivy is way better than this thing. <laughs> Perhaps the most uh, egregious example of, like, ridiculously high level evolutions for no reason uh rufflet and uh mandibuzz these things are both like d <laughs> these things are both d like bravery stats like, these are pretty good uh, you're not getting a bravery <laughs> you're not getting one like rufflet level 54 are you kidding me oh my god d d awful um i'm actually gonna put it like it's like not in the game, right? It's basically not in the game. It's Victory Road, and it takes so much work to get it usable. No. No. It's awful. Th the big issue with these Gen 5 Pokemon is that in Gen 5 itself, wild Pokemon are at a fairly high level. So getting them to their insane evolution levels is like, it's still a bit unfair, but it's not ridiculous. In like Gen 8, when you can catch Rufflet at like level 10 in the wild area, and you have to wait 40 levels to evolve it? What an atrocity. <laughs> what an atrocity. Uh, and Vullaby, uh, the counterpart to uh, Braviary. I'm just gonna show its stats, but I mean, you guys already know. Uh, defensive Pokemon are worse than offensive Pokemon, and this is the defensive version of, I can't even remember its name, Rufflet's Evolution. It's the defensive version of Rufflet's Evolution, <laughs> which makes it even worse. Yeah, that's a D. It's a D. Oh, Braviary, yeah. I wasn't brave enough to remember, guys. Sorry. Heatmore. My goodness. If there was, like, a C tier for fire Pokemon, I'd put this thing there. Like, who weeps for Heatmore? This thing is so boring. Uh, I mean... It's awful. D. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like victory road. Um, if you could get this earlier, I'd maybe put it in like... I'm talking like start of the game early. I'd put this in like low B. But you get it right before the end of the game. That's a D. <laughs> That's a D. I think it's better than the birds though. I guess the dynamic is that it's supposed to be that like heat more hunts Durant because it's quadruple effective against Durant. But here's the thing, Durant is actually good. <laughs> like, I, I think if you haven't seen Durant's stats, uh, you might be surprised. Yeah, Kevin Durant, MVP, look at this. Look at this. Like, this thing is min-max. Like, look at this speed, 109. Look at this attack, 109. What? <laughs> Uh, like, this thing is, is kind of a chad. And because it's like a really fast bug type, this thing like runs over like half the Elite Four. Like, what? <laughs> I think this thing might be like top of C, bottom of B. Because like you get this thing and it's it's ready to go. Like for an endgame Pokemon, look at this. This, thing, this ain't a small ant, okay? We're not doing challenge run. This is a big ant. Uh, I think this is going to be like top of C. I, I don't think I can quite put it in B because it's basically only for the Elite Four and you do have to train it a little bit to like get it ready for there. Uh, you know, you, you gotta go th through the preseason with Kevin Durant, but uh, it's pretty good. Better than Snivy? Get out of here, man. I, I will defend Snivy against that. It is definitely not better than Snivy. Snivy's with you the whole game, bro. Although, yeah, if you started with Durant, it would be better. Does it outspeed gets his Hydreigon? It does. Um, Assuming you, like, give it a little bit of speed. Uh, yeah, so speaking of, uh, of Victory Road and, uh, d d Dino? I don't know how you pronounce this. Dino or Dino? Um, so I, it's like, it's German, right? Uh, whatever it is, it's bad. Um, <laughs> Dino? Oh, Dino? Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's, it's a deep Pokemon for sure. Um, Hydreigon? Really, really good. Uh, level 64 evolution. No. And it's level 50 to Zuelas, who is also not good. This is a, this is a D, guys. Uh, <laughs> this is a D. Yeah, obviously, if, if you could get Hydreigon, I mean, I guess technically you could get it, but like, in the context of this tier list, you're not getting it. Uh, you, you're basically stuck with Dino and, or Dino, and Dino sucks. <laughs> sucks. It's below, it is actually worse than the birds, yes. <laughs> Uh, cause the birds at least reach their potential, like, faster. It is a sad state of affairs when you can say that freaking Rufflet and Vullaby reach their potential faster than you. This thing's horrible. Yeah, it's basically post-game. And gets us he's evil, so he doesn't mind using hacked uh, Pokemon for his underleveled Hydreigon. But Hydreigon, really cool. Maybe my favorite, uh, one of my favorite pseudo-legendaries. I love this design. But yeah, yeah awful. <laughs> yeah, it may as well be untiered. But... I don't think Dino is the worst Pokemon in the game. The worst Pokemon for uh, Pokemon Black and White in-game is Larvesta. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's there's no arguments about this. Uh, because the way you get Larvesta is it's from an egg in like an end-game route. So it is level one. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's it's not post-game. It's an egg in, like, Route 17. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's... It's the worst Pokemon in the game. Specifically for... Uh, in-game. Uh, Volcarona, of course, is actually very good. Uh, but you don't get Volcarona. You get a level 1 Larvesta at the end of the game that evolves at level... 59. No thank you. Worst Pokemon in the game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Would, would you like an egg in this trying time? No, no thanks. You can keep it. <laughs> Awful. Really sad. I, I honestly think they should have just made um, Larvesta post-game. Like, you um you beat Alder and then he gives you a Larvesta egg. I think that would have been fine. Uh, but yeah, this thing's bad. Alright. Legendary time. The Musketeer Trio. Sorry, okay. Uh, hang on. Uh, I guess I have to read uh, unregistered Reggie's comment. Uh, probably the way he meant it to. Uh, well, actually, Mr. Cheese, you get Larvesta after you get Surf, which means you have access to... Doesn't matter. Okay, still bad. <laughs> Alright. Musketeer Trio. 
Cobalion, a uh, Chad typing, steel fighting, uh, and like pretty good stats. I mean, we are fast, 108, uh, and you know we can use stab fighting moves off of uh, 90 base attack. Unfortunately, we are uh, really uh, late. <laughs> we are really late, but once you get it, it's ready to go. Yeah, you can get it around the same time as Axew. Sacred Sword does go brrrr. It's pretty late. I mean, it's not like Cobalion, um, I meant to say, uh, Terrakion. Terrakion is, is late. That's like, it's literally in Victory Road. Uh, but Cobalion is fine. I think if we're gonna give Axew a B, uh, I think we're also gonna have to give Cobalion at least a B. Maybe bottom of A. This thing's pretty good. I think considering how much you have to invest into Axew, I think Axew, once it's Haxorus, is better. But you don't start with Haxorus, right? You start with Axew, uh, who is okay. Uh, but Cobalion starts off good and stays good. It just never gets great. I think we'll put it at the very bottom of A. Is is that acceptable to everyone? Uh, who's next? It's Terrakion. So Terrakion. Uh, Terrakion? Terrakion? Uh, okay. Uh, I gotta make sure you can actually see it here. Okay, there you go. So, Terrakion. On paper, insane, right? Uh, on paper, it is the best of the Musketeer trio. Because it's the most offensive, right? You're, you're com It's coming at you with that excellent 108 base speed. Look at that attack stat. Uh, 129, rock fighting stab, that's pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, it's basically an Elite Four Pokemon, right? <laughs> um... I think if we gave Durant a high C, I think we're going to give Terrakion a high C. It's basically Durant, but like alternate alternate typing. Dur Terrakion D tier, no, no, it's not that bad. Like, it has a use. Um, these stats are like kind of deceiving. Again, because remember, you're basic, you basically have no EVs. So you're, you're going to be losing stats-wise to Pokemon that have worse stats but actually have their EVs. But even out of the box, this thing is pretty good. Uh, I actually think Durant is a little better. Uh, because Durant runs over, like, two of the Elite Four, and uh, this guy um, really only beats Grimsley. And he actually, like, kind of sucks against the other two. Sorry, uh, other three. <laughs> um, he's bad against three of them, right? Because he loses to the Ghost one, the Psychic one, and the Fighting one, because he's part Rock, and he gets punched. So he really only beats Grimsley. I think Durant is uh, a little bit better. But you could argue the, uh, the other way around. I personally think Durant is better. Yeah, it's also um, a good point uh, brought up by Unregistered Reggie. Durant makes very good use of Hone Claws uh, because it starts off very fast, so it doesn't need to boost its speed, and it has Hustle, which increases its power but reduces its accuracy. So Hone Claws patches that right up, uh, and then you just run over the enemy team. Uh, and yes, you're right, Silver. Um, Durant is easier to get, uh, which does actually factor into this list, because you, you do have to consider, a part of availability is how much extra time you have to spend uh, to get them, which we'll get to when we do the genies. Uh, Verizion. It's... Uh, it's a grass type, that's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, it is definitely the, the worst... Well, no. I won't say it's the worst of the Musketeer trio. I think I'm actually going to end up placing it above Terrakion, because it is available for more of the game. Um, uh, Verizion, can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now, Verizion? Can you hear me now? Uh, you're gonna put it... It's definitely worse than Cobalion. Cobalion is definitely better. Um, just because of that steel typing, uh, which gives a lot more defensive utility than this thing. But it's fine. I think uh, if we put Cobalion above... It has a name, Axew. I think we need justice for Snivy. We're gonna put Cobal... We're gonna put Verizion below Snivy. Because it is, uh, it is really strong as soon as you get it, but you get it kind of late, not as late as Terrakion, and it is uh, not as good as Cobalion. Uh, this D tier got me heated, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, now's your chance, uh, Matthew. Who in D tier do you think doesn't belong there? Uh, why Tynemo? Oh my god, Tynemo. Okay, we'll, we'll do a special just for you. Look at this. Why is Tynemo in D tier? This is why. Oof. And you're not getting out of this until level 39. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's, it's a D. It's horrible. Yeah, see, dude. And now, now that Matthew knows the truth, I'm sure you agree. Yeah, it goes in D. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Yes! <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, Tynemo fans in shambles. Never underestimate 
how high the evolution levels are in Gen 5. <laughs> All right, the genies. Uh, I actually really like these designs. Um, very minor Wii brand here. So the uh, the three genies, uh, uh, Tornadus, uh, Thunderous, and Landorus, are based on um, some Japanese uh, gods. Uh, Fujin, the wind one. Uh, Daijin, the thunder one. And... Um, Inari, uh, who's the goddess or the god of fertility, which is what uh, Landorus represents, uh, and there's like really cool statues of these like all over Japan. Uh, so I'll, I'll put some of those pictures in the edited video. Uh, all of these genies. Uh, so Landorus, um, you have to like catch both of them and then present them to a shrine. So that's why I think Landorus is untiered. Uh, you basically can't get it. <laughs> Whatever you say, there'll always be old buff men in clouds. Uh, but these are very tricky in terms of availability. The two wandering genies are very tricky to rank because they're wandering Pokemon, so you activate them, like wandering around, by talking to an old lady, like near the end of the game. So even if you catch them the moment they're available, they're coming in late, and you're not catching them the moment they're available because they are wandering. So you're gonna have to like waste a bunch of time to try and find them. I'm gonna say at least an hour, right? Just to like get them. And that's assuming you're like masterballing them and catching them right away, which you can do. I mean, that's not unreasonable. But with all of that considered, like that is some, some shaky availability. I think for that reason, if you catch them like instantly, the moment they're available, I would probably put them in like Verizian tier. Uh, Cause they're both like pretty darn good. <laughs> Thunderous is definitely better. Uh, because you basically get a, an electric type for free and now you can also use electric moves, cool. <laughs> but Tornadus is also like not bad at all. Uh, but you really have to consider the availability because yeah, the Musketeer Trio, you can just, they're chilling out in caves, you can just go get them. Uh, but this you really gotta do a ton of work. So I think with availability considered, I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna say next to Terrakion, any objections? Because Terrakion is really late, but basically guaranteed. And these, these two, uh, the genies, are fairly late and not guaranteed. People are saying D. So how about this? We'll, we'll put them at the bottom of C. Yeah, they have bad move pools, but like with these stats, just use your stab moves. If you get them instantly, they're better than this, but I think considering the work you have to put in and how late they are, like even considering that, I think like bottom of uh, C is maybe where they should go. 10 minutes, there's no way it's 10 minutes because you have to encounter them, right? They don't even show up in your, okay, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure. Let's let's do some, uh, let's do some myth busting with the power of chat. I am pretty sure that they do not show up in your Pokedex, like to track, unless you've encountered them. Maybe with speed up, that doesn't count, bro. What? <laughs> no. Oh, billboards on the, okay, the signs do tell you. Okay, so you can track them. Um, okay, so you can actually track them, which makes them uh, easier to catch. So I think considering that, I'm not moving them. Uh, <laughs> I'm not moving them. It's still such a hassle to get them, no. All right, speaking of like weird availability, this might be like the weirdest availability in the series, right? Because for the um, Reshram and Zekrom, I think they have the worst availability in the game that you can rank, right? <laughs> because you literally only get them for the end battle and the Getsus battle. And this is where it gets tricky. You're probably going to use them, right? So like, consider these Pokemon in D, right? You're never gonna use them. They're all complete ass. But these two Pokemon, at least you use them for two battles, right? <laughs> So I don't think that's D, because like these Pokemon in D, you would never use for anything. Oh, you're forced to put them in your party, but if you white out, you can box them? Okay. Well, the thing is like, they're also not like insta-win buttons, right? Like if you're familiar with, I'm, I'm gonna pull up their stats. Um, If you're familiar with a uh, Fire Emblem, one thing that you usually get at the end of Fire Emblem games is you get an archetype called a Goto. Um, usually it's like an old guy who's really, really strong, um, who like stomps the entire end game by himself because they want to make sure that you can actually complete the game. These are basically Gotos. <laughs> like they're super strong Pokemon that you get like for free guaranteed, but uh, you don't actually 
get them for much of the game. It's literally two battles, but they're very good in those two battles. But yeah, I would say they're also not as good as Goto because Goto is like, he solos the game. These guys don't, you still need a team of other Pokemon. Yeah, I know, I like they might even be like gray area cause like they're barely in the game, but they are in the game for sure. They're terrible against both last two battles and Reshiram himself in the chat is saying that, I don't know. My personal inclination is bottom of C because these Pokemon in D tier, you're never using them ever. They suck. They don't do anything. Reshiram and Zekrom, you at least use them for two battles. So I think they get like the minimum possible contribution, like not the dishonor of D. We're, we're not giving them the D, no way. Right, and like one thing that we haven't talked about a lot yet is uh, opportunity cost, which I guess is part of availability. But basically when you're giving XP to one Pokemon, you're not giving it to another Pokemon, right? So that's part of the reason why Ty or, uh, Tynamo is horrific, because you have to put a lot of work into it to get it to evolve and be like usable, and that's XP that's not going to a different Pokemon. But these two cover legendaries are free. They join you, you don't have to train them at all. You're guaranteed to get them, like you don't go out of your way at all, like it, in a way, like they're basically like as free as starters, right? Because you're forced to get starters, you're forced to get these. Story tier. <laughs> um, it, it does feel weird putting them at the bottom of C. I, like they're such a unique case. I think we're gonna, uh, and I guess we'll call it the story tier? <laughs> Even grayer area, yeah. Okay, grayer area, sure. It's so thematic, guys. Oh, I spelled gray the, a different way. Okay, grayer area. It's my favorite way to use Michael Wang, you read my psychic type? I was about to say, this is my favorite way that the cover legendaries have ever been used. Um, Cause they're used like in a story confrontation. And me personally, I'm sure a lot of you also feel this way. I feel like using cover legendaries is kind of cheap. Um, but in this game, your opponent is using the other cover legendary. So why wouldn't you use yours? I mean, you want it to be fair. I really love how they're implemented, but in terms of like an in-game tier list, it's like really tricky to rank them. Cause like, what? They're like kind of in the game, but not really. <laughs> We're almost done. So I think because this is a live stream, uh, this is now your chance, citizens of the chat, to tell me that I'm wrong. I mean, you've been doing it the entire stream anyway. I mean, don't stop now. But now that we have everybody in a position, this is where uh, you get to uh, get the nitpick and you, you can tell you can tell me what should be moving in terms of placement Here's your chance five hours for a stupid tier list. I'm sorry, Fabio. Thanks for watching um, <laughs> There's a lot of Pokemon um, And these are all new Pokemon. So I wasn't able to repeat anything from earlier. These are all fresh Pokemon with a bunch of new mechanics <laughs> Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much to the mods uh, for their sterling work as always and thank you to everybody who donated uh, and of course to everybody who watch this in the first place. Uh, five hours for Gen 5. I think that is the, the end of this tier list. The mod's rioting right now. I'm sorry! They want better pay. They should riot for pay in the first place. Yeah, thank you guys so much uh, for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think livestream is the format we'll go for the other tier lists. Um, and, and I'll edit them later. Thank you again to everybody who stopped by. I'm going to be waving as this goes to the end screen. It's not working, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Ooh.